Welcome to the William Matar Thursday Night Lights, live on My TV Buffalo, presented by the Final Outlet. Good afternoon and welcome inside a special edition of the William Matar Thursday Night Lights, brought to you by the Vinyl Outlet. We're here at Kessler Field in West Seneca, New York, where the 2-2 two two St. Francis Red Raiders are getting ready to take on the 2-2 two two Canisius Crusaders in an exciting Monsignor Martin Athletic Association matchup. I'm Mike Bunt, joined alongside Scott Pilkey. And Scott, I can't wait for this game to get underway today. Two of the finest coaches in Western New York, and they're going to have a great chess match tonight the entire afternoon. There is some amazing talent on both sides of the ball, but we're first going to get a look at the St. Francis Red Raiders quarterback, Landon Welka. Well, you know, he's throwing the ball all over the place. 269 yards last week with three touchdowns, an incredible quarterback rating. He's going to be fun to watch today. He, he absolutely lit it up last week. And then here's Kanisha's running back, Elijah Kimball. This back, one of the top underclassmen in the country. He's getting looked at by colleges across the nation. Well, and you see why, because it's 71 carries, 491 yards so far this season, 122.8 yards per game and eight touchdowns. He's a, a bear to bring down. Now, with this matchup with two premier teams in the conference, what are the keys to this game? Well, St. Francis has to hold the line. they got a big group up front, and they have to get to Kimball early. And on the Canisius side, they have to win the turnover battle and contain Welka. It's all going to get underway in just a moment here at Kessler Field. Coming up after the break, we're going to have opening kickoff. This matchup features two of the best coaches in the area, starting with Jerry Smith at St. Francis, 191 and 166 and four all-time record in his 37th season at St. Francis. Nobody's put more guys at the four-year level and nobody has put more guys in the NFL locally than Jerry Smith. And then on the other side of the ball, Canisius head coach Craig Kurzanski, an alum of Canisius High School. He's 169, 110, and two all-time record, and he's back at his alma mater. Well, Craig had an amazing career at Williamsville South, and now he's one of the premier coaches to replace at Canisius, his alma mater. It's going to be a great game, like I said, a pure chess match. And every year, this game helps determine who's the regular season champion. So right now, there's a lot on the line in this regular season contest. Yeah, and it, and it starts with the opening kickoff. Craig Krasanski said to me that special teams is going to play a big part. You go back to last year's game that we covered. It was 41-21, uh, to 21, and definitely St. Francis won the special teams uh, game last year. Uh, but they, they played again later in the year, and it was only a 21-20 to 20 victory by St. Francis. Both of these teams coming off a victory this past weekend. Canisius over St. Joe's and then St. Francis with a win over Cathedral Prep. And it will be Canisius kicking the ball off to St. Francis to open this ball game in just a moment. And what a beautiful day, right? I mean, look at this. Perfect fall day, about 65, 70 degrees. Couldn't get any nicer out here. And both teams underway as we get ready for the Costanzo's kickoff. Brought to you by Costanzo's Bakery. St. Francis with the return, and they'll get all the way down to the 30-yard line to begin their opening possession of this ball game. Already you can see the physicality that's going to exist throughout the entire course of the day. Love what we're going to see here. And it's going to be St. Francis with the football first. Quarterback Landon Welka leading the way. He's coming off a fantastic performance last week. And on the season, 25 of 45 for 403 yards and five touchdowns. And he was lighting it up against Cathedral Prep. And on first down, it's a handoff on a sweep. And that'll be a gain of about five for Damone Allen on the carry. One of the ways you're going to get outside of the size that Canisius has is to hit the perimeter early. You can see 
you can see the safeties coming down. And we're going to take a look at the St. Francis starting offense led by Landon Welka, their quarterback. And one of his go-to players is Damone Allen at wide receiver. The lineup's brought to you by William Matar. Heard in the car, call William Matar. Damone Allen's averaging 76 yards per game receiving. Uh, he's a tremendous athlete. Expect them to get the ball to him quickly. And on second down, it's a carry, but it's defended well by Canisius. A gain of only one, setting up a third and three. Exactly the type of game plan that Coach Krasiansky said they had to have is control the line of scrimmage, and so far you've seen them do that in the first three plays. And now a look at the Canisius defense. Their starting lineup brought to you by William Matar. And then you see the big name up front, Patrick Enright. He is a beast on this team, and there's a lot of size throughout this defense. Yeah, and, and they have to hold the line because you have an equal amount of size and talent on St. Francis's offensive line as well. That starting lineup brought to you by William Matar. It's third and three for St. Francis. Crusaders looking to get a stop on the first defensive series of the game, and it's a QB keeper. Welka makes a man miss, and he takes it upfield for the first down. Well, you can really see what Canisius is trying to do. They're keeping their safeties up under 10 yards. That was a cover zero look just to stop the run. The run. Very nice job by that quarterback getting the first down. And you know, you see it here, everybody's pressing. There's a lot of push off levels, and the quarterback just finds it, uses his feet, and lays his body out for the first down. Nice job. St. Francis, more known for their passing game, but they do have the ability to run it. Landon Welka entered today with 27 carries for 141 yards and three touchdowns on the ground. Well, you look at his physique. He's just built like a college level, a next level player. Now you see him two by two. And Welka gets the completion, and that's going to be right around first down gain. Wait to see if they rule it. And they do give him a first down, and that first down brought to you by Interstate Batteries. Interstate Batteries, outrageously dependable. See, he's got time in his pocket. Really nice job by the offensive line. It's just a little seam route. Catch and throw. Nice job by the quarterback. And that was Andrew Lindstrom who had the first down reception for the Red Raiders. They have the ball in Canisius territory to open their first offensive possession. Welka in shotgun. He's looking towards his left, has a man, and that's gonna be just shy of a first down, a gain of about eight as Welka went back to Andrew Lindstrom on that pass. Nice mix by Coach Smith so far, the run and pass. He's just seeing the quarterback sitting back there so nice and easy, and it's just uh, throw and catch with his guys so far. I had the chance of watching the Red Raiders game last week against Cathedral Prep, and Welka was slinging it left and right in the second half, throwing bombs, and the passing game is definitely the strength of the St. Francis offense. Classic run formation here. They like the power in the counter, but that nice cue read right off of it, great play. Welka with nice awareness, and he takes that for another Interstate Batteries first down. Interstate Batteries outrageously dependable, and Welka shows that he can do it both on the ground and in the air. And right now you're seeing the combination of what Jerry Smith's offense is like. It's a mixture of spread offense and power football. And right now they're running at a really nice tempo. kanisha has got to figure out a way to stop this here. In one of the keys of this game, we were talking about the RPOs for St. Francis, and we're already seeing that come into play early in this contest. Welka takes the snap. He's looking deep. He has a man wide open, and this is going to go for a St. Francis touchdown. Evan Knocker with the touchdown reception, brought to you by Firth Jewelers. Go forth to Firth. Got a flag, it might be coming back, a little holding there, but a tremendous uh, throw downfield. Waiting for the official call. And it looks like this one is actually going to be on Kanisha's. First little foul, roughly the passer. The 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. 
We saw that very play in their pregame warm-ups with the play action. What they did here to, to make this go downfield the way that they did, they get the ball out quick, quick hitter so you couldn't get to the quarterback. That brought the safeties down into the box. Little play action going up top. That's what made that touchdown happen. No surprise to see St. Francis testing out the Kenesha secondary early, especially after what they did last week against Cathedral Prep. The extra point is up, and it is good, giving St. Francis an early 7-0 lead over the Cru Crusaders. And we're back at Kessler Field where St. Francis takes an early 7-0 lead following a Landon Welka touchdown pass to Evan Knocker to put St. Francis in front. That was a seven-play, 70-yard drive for the Red Raiders taking up three minutes and 37 seconds. And they're now kicking off from the 45-yard line following the personal foul. So this brings up an interesting situation. Do you still kick it off like normal or do you do any... Uh, anything interesting like an onside kick or anything crazy here? Well, see, that's what uh, Jerry Smith is known for. You never know. You always have to have your hands team on the field against Jerry Smith. This is a particular uh, a piece of excellence on this coaching staff. They spend a lot of time. This is a third. Uh, this isn't just extra, extra point and special teams. This is as important to them as offense and defense. So the Red Raiders will be kicking off from the 45-yard line. It'll be a Costanzo's kickoff for the Red Raiders, and they will kick this down to the 10-yard line, and Canisius set for return. They have a little bit of a hole up the middle, and he's still on his feet as that was Jaden Clark who takes it all the way down to the 40-yard line. He almost took it back all the way to, to where they were kicking it from. Well, again, you can sometimes get too fancy. Why pooch kick it when you can kick it out of the back of the end zone? That almost opened it up, and that's a great opportunity, great field position for the Crusaders. So to rehash what we just saw from the St. Francis offense, a seven-play, 70-yard touchdown drive that was finished off by a touchdown pass from Landon Welka to Evan Knocker. And on first down, Mattia Brusco throws it to his right and picks up about six yards for the Crusaders. You're going to see this formation where you have the tight end in the H-back position, and we call it Trey. It's three wide to the right, and that's going to be used for their power game, for their counter game, and anything else they want to run tonight. And Mattia Brusco, he enters this season doing this game doing pretty well 38 of 65 for 451 and two touchdowns on the year so it'll be second in four for Canisius and this is a handoff to Elijah Kimball makes the man miss cuts to his left he has some room to the 30 to the 20 and Kimball is gonna make it all the way to the end zone for a touchdown Crusaders go the distance and they Get on the board very quickly on offense. Wow, a young man at a sophomore age. That was a simple power play. Pulled the backside guard, pulled the backside guard up inside. He breaks it out, sees back across, plants on a dime, comes all the way across the field, and there's no touching him. There's nobody that can even pursue him to that end zone. Nice job. And Kimball, you can see, did make it over the end line to get the touchdown. A Firth Jewelers touchdown, go forth to Firth. There's a reason that kid is getting looked at by the top schools in the country. Just that cut and that vision alone. And the extra point is up by Matt Dion to tie the game at 7-all. And we might be seeing a shootout based on the first two possessions of this ball game. Well, as we said earlier, it's going to come down to coaching. And these coaches, the people they have up in the box, the people that they have uh, watching and seeing the types of formations, they'll make their adjustments. It will slow down. But so far, both offenses, very, very powerful. And we said going in, 
both of these offenses attack you in different styles. They both have the balance to do things uh, different ways, but Kanishis, more of a run-oriented team. Look at the blocking down the field, and Kimball, when he gets to the outside, good luck catching him. Well, that's what we talk about here, though, is that you know we're focused on a great quarterback on the St. Francis side of the ball and a great running back on the Kanishis side of the ball. But we said in the beginning, it starts up front and the size and the, the levels that they're getting up to. Good job by the wide receivers getting downfield, staying on their blocks, and the offensive linemen staying in, in, their, in their blocks until the ball is downfield. And the scoring summary for Canisius, two plays, 61 yards, 49 seconds, as Elijah Kimball gets into the end zone on a 50-plus yard touchdown run for the sophomore running back. The Crusaders now getting ready for the Costanzo's kickoff, brought to you by Costanzo's Bakery. And this is a nice looking kick all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Kid's got a great leg, nice job. You don't see many high school kickers with the leg to get it all the way down to the end zone. No, Matt Dion is probably the best uh, leg in Western New York right now, if not one of the top in the state. Uh, big kid, number 35, uh, real proud of what he just did there. That's a, And when Coach Krasanski said it could come down to special teams, this young man, I was watching him in warm-up, he has a 40-plus leg for extra points, and I'm sorry, for field goals. I was going to say, last week when I was at the, the St. Joe's Canisius game, I was watching him in warm-ups during that game as well, and he... He definitely has a leg from 40 plus, which is very impressive for this level. St. Francis with their second offensive possession of the afternoon. Welka in shotgun. This is going to be a handoff on first down. And it's only gonna go for a gain of about a few. You're seeing a nice 4-2-5 front by Canisius. This is a balanced front that's gonna allow him to keep four deep or at least under 10 yards, but it does leave him open for those seam routes that we're seeing. And when St. Francis runs the ball, they're often giving it to running back Larry Hardy the third, who entered today with 31 carries for 143 yards on the season. You know, we just had a great picture of right now Mason Allnut, 6'4", 251 pounds. Obviously, you know, his father has got a little bit of uh, athleticism in him, being the athletic director at the University at Buffalo. Uh, they're doing a great job over there. I wouldn't be surprised that his son can play at that level as well. Welka passing on second down, and what a big hit. But there is a flag at the conclusion of the play. Well, you know, both of these teams are very physical. They come up, they gather. You can just tell the fundamentals are very important on both sides of the ball. And Alna was suggesting that there was a face mask on St. Francis. We'll wait to see what the call is as the refs continue to talk it over. I will say Mason Alna is a tremendous talent on defense for St. for Canisius. Uh, he was all over the field last week against St. Joe's, and there's a reason why he's a D1 player. Yes. 59. Yep, yep. It was into hands, number 59, offense. 10-yard penalty, 10-yard penalty, second down again. Keep your eye on number 56 to Javez Caldwell. He is a very physical player. He's, uh, he's, he's clogging up the middle of the line. I'm, I'm so very impressed with this young man's play so far. So the penalty was on St. Francis. It'll be a 10-yard penalty according to the officials. We're still waiting for them to move the sticks. It should be second down if the penalty was accepted. And that's the one thing that will be big in a game like this, penalties. You do not want to get behind the chains uh, against either one of these defenses. Officially second and se 17 for the Red Raiders. Welka looking to pass. He's going to hold it. He has some room, and that's a solid gain on second down to get that yardage back and set up a third and manageable. And that's the kind of position you want to be in. Great awareness by the young man. You know, he could throw the ball into trouble or he can use, gain the yards he needs to, to to put him in a position for a third and medium. 
Great protection here. He has the pocket. He steps up, holds the guy with just a flash of the ball, and then has enough wherewithal to put his head forward, gain as much as he can. So that'll set up a third and four for the Red Raiders. This is the third offensive possession we've seen in this game overall. The first two by both teams have resulted in touchdowns. St. Francis looking to keep that going. Welka takes the snap. He's going over the middle of the field. And that's Knocker with another catch. An impressive jump ball reception for the junior receiver. Again, that's the second time they've been hit in the same critical area. That's that deep seam route and... But it's gonna be coming back. An illegal procedure on St. Francis. And Scott, that was a, it was a nice looking play by St. Francis, but it will not stand. No, and the, the good thing for Canisius was is that they got to the quarterback that time as well. You can see that they're starting to put pressure on. So if St. Francis wants to drop back for that deep ball. Field procedure, five men in the backfield. Offense, five yard penalty from the previous spot. Yep. And we saw a lot of that from St. Francis last week where they were targeting down the middle of the field for, for deep vertical gains and something that they obviously feel comfortable uh, trying to attack Canisius early in this contest. Tucker Job in motion. Welka pressured, he's going deep, he has a man open, and he gets the reception as he finds Damone Allen down the field for the Interstate Batteries first down. Interstate Batteries outrageously dependable. Well, it's a great scheme. You're starting to see a 4-2-5, as we said. They're staying back in the cover two, and all it is is a straight down the line. You might want to step up. They have such good speed, and they're getting behind your secondary. You might want to step up in some form of a man coverage to jam them at the line of scrimmage. Damone Allen entered this contest with eight receptions for 228 yards and three touchdowns. So he doesn't have a ton of catches, but when he does, he makes a play with it. And on first down, it's a big run for St. Francis for another Interstate Batteries first down. Interstate Batteries outrageously dependable. Those big plays have a psychological effect because now your guys stand and they're questioning. Are they running the football? Are they passing the football? They did man up on the outside wide receiver that last time. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing them do that more down here in the red zone. But that also allows you then, when you're, if you're playing man, it gives you the, the quarterback the opportunity to beat you with his legs. And Hardy showed some nice balance on that play to keep his legs going forward and get the first down carry. So it'll be first and 10 from St. Francis as they approach the Just Pizza red zone. And that's Hardy once again, but he's going to get tackled from behind. And there is a flag on the play, a holding on St. Francis that'll make it first and 20. Yeah, and just as we talked about here, you know, you're starting to see inside the 20, Canisius is playing zone, or Canisius is playing man. Up and two inside the red zone, they've been playing cover two and cover four. So it'll be first and 20 for St. Francis following the holding call. But as we've seen, holding offense, 10 yards from the previous spot, still first down. It hasn't been an issue for St. Francis to try to pick up chunk plays so far in this ball game. No, it, you know, but un unfortunately in this drive, the chunk plays that they picked up have also been diminished because of, you know, holding penalties and things of that nature. And, 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 that'll, and that can keep Canisius in a game like this because they're that talented and can hit you just as quick as St. Francis can hit them. St. Francis with four wide. Zielinski in motion, and this is a throwback to Allen, who's bottled up in the backfield. That's Mason Allnut making a play, and he was all over that. That's an impressive young man right there. Look at every, every part of that kid is telling you he's got a Division I body. Look at the pursuit coming from the backside. He breaks down, but he doesn't stop on the, on the pursuit and finishes to the echo of the whistle. Nice job. So now St. Francis really behind the chains. They have the ball at the 37. They need to get all the way down to the 10-yard line to pick up a first down. So 
It will be second 27. The lateral speed of Canisius up front is not something that Jerry Smith wants to deal with all day because his offensive line cannot contain the speed of the defensive lineman or the flow of the linebackers. You're better to get them on a quick hit. And that play by Mason Allnut has the possibility of being our vinyl outlet defense play of the game. It's definitely a nominee. Prior to the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll be selecting the Vinyl Outlet Defense Play of the Game, the Vinyl Outlet, WNY's Best Porch Deck and Fence Installations. Boy, Allnut can, can run, can he? Allnut is an incredible player. There's a reason why. And obviously his, his father played Division I football at Missouri. He's the athletic director at UB. You just knew that Allnut was going to be able to be a guy that gets to that next level. Well, you know, and, and not to take away from anybody else on that defensive line, but he is absolutely a step, you know, a step faster, a bit bigger than everybody else, and I expect he's going to be a bigger player in, uh, throughout the success of this game for Canisius. And we're going to take a quick timeout as both teams are in a huddle. We're back at Kessler Field where St. Francis is facing a second and 27 following a very impressive defensive play by Mason Allnut stopping Damone Allen on first down. Welka looking to pass. He finds Hardy and they're going to pick up a good chunk of yards back as Hardy gets down to the 22 yard line to make this at least a somewhat manageable third down play coming up. Well, you know, great job by putting the man in motion checking to see if they're in man coverage or if they're in zone. The man goes out in coverage into the flat and that's a great read by their quarterback. So officially it's going to be third and 12 for the Red Raiders. They've shown no hesitancy to putting the ball in the air and trying to get explosive plays down the field. I would expect the same here on third down. Job in motion. Welka fakes the handoff. He gets it to Job. Some room. A nice tackle, and that's going to be a fumble. Kanishas with the recovery, and they're taking it down the field, and we're waiting a call. And it looks like they are calling it a fumble and a recovery by Kanishas, but down at the spot of the recovery. So it'll be Crusader ball inside their 14 yard line. And just a great all around play. The setup was nice. They put the guy in motion, nobody touched him, but that's exactly how it goes. The ball comes out, nice job. You see a quarterback throws it out to the man who's pretty much left on a, on a you know, uncovered. He comes out great, coming up to tackle, physical play, and that's the turnover. So Canisius will start their next drive on their own 13 yard line. And we'll take a look at the Canisius offense brought to you by William Matar. And it all gets started with their running back, Elijah Kimball, who is an absolutely fantastic running back. But they have some other stars on this offense as well. Uh, Matteo Brusco is a really solid quarterback. And then Jaden Clark, he's getting a lot of D1 looks as well at wide receiver. Yeah, they've just they've got enough talent to spread the ball out. Young quarterback, so it's important to make sure that he has uh, good decisions to take exactly what they give you. And so far in the couple passes that we've seen him throw, he's doing exactly his job. We don't want to see any turnovers. And right now, Canisius is in it. Nice stand by their defense to stop a very long drive by St. Francis. Now, we're already almost done with the first quarter, and we've only seen the Canisius offense on the field for two plays. 
Well, and that's going to wear and tear on, on the Canisius defense, but they stood strong, couple key penalties, couple key penalties, and it, that stopped the, the, the momentum so far of St. Francis. So Canisius starting their second offensive possession of the day inside their own 15-yard line. This is a handoff on first down. It looks to be Kimball, and that'll be a gain of about six yards down to the 19-yard line. And we'll take a look at the St. Francis Red Raiders defense. The starting lineups brought to you by William Matar. Heard in a car called William Matar, and they have a handful of solid players. Number 22, Tevio Hoos is a solid player. Damone Allen, there's a bunch of good guys up and down this defensive lineup. Well, and we talk about tradition here. Tevio Hoos, his brother Mason Hoos, played here and was an awesome All-State linebacker. Actually, we had a great honor of having him play for us at SUNY Erie Football for a year before he went back up to the Division I level. You'll see great things out of his brother as we go here. So it'll be second and four for Canisius. Brusco looking to pass, and he has his guy on first down. And that'll be a flag at the end of the play following the first down. That's an Interstate Batteries first down. Interstate Batteries outrageously dependable. So far, we're seeing the big penalties have been on the Sam, uh, you know, have been on the St. Francis Personal side of the foul. ball. Horse collar tackle, defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Nice catch. Nice play and just an unnecessary ending of that play. That was Xavier Gates Franklin who had the reception for the first down and after the penalty, that'll move the ball all the way down to the 42 yard line. It's a handoff to Kimball on first down. He's breaking loose once again down to the 38 yard line, Elijah Kimball with the Interstate Batteries first down. Interstate Batteries outrageously dependable. I really like what we're seeing out of Coach Krasanski's approach. Mateo Br uh, Brusco is a young guy. He's thrown the out ball a couple times. A nice take what they give you and then let your running back run through the line of scrimmage. Great play game plan so far. And tonight's closed captioning is exclusively brought to you by Babcha's Pierogi. Canisius with a new set of downs. And it's Amir Hernandez who gets it this time and he's gonna get another first down for the Crusaders offense. He's still trucking his legs as St. Francis struggles to bring him down all the way to the 32 yard line. A couple penalties and the momentum is shifted right now. You're seeing Canisius really grinding things out. They brought a blitz from the boundary side corner and that's where the run went to. Nice job and tremendous leg strength and dedication to that number, that running back right there. Good job. So that'll take us to the end of, well, there is a timeout on the play right now. So. Look at Amir Hernandez this season who has 31 carries for 259 yards. We saw a lot of him last week against St. Joe's as he was able to get quite a bit of an impact when Elijah Kimball was out facing some cramps in the early part of the second half. Nice one-two punch. A problem every coach wants to have. Yeah, no one's ever going to complain about having too many solid running backs on their roster. Imagine being the, the linebackers in the secondary that have to tackle both of those guys all day long. The St. Francis defense back on the field as the Canisius offense trots their way back. You, know, you look at the team stats for Canisius, 451 yards passing, 767 yards rushing before we came into today. Really, it's a nice balance. A toss play to Kimball on first down. Cuts inside, but a nice tackle by Sam Skulski, who gets him for about a gain of about one on first down. Pretty play. Again, you're seeing the fundamentals of tackling. This is just, these are just both well coached football teams. 
And that'll do it for the first quarter here at Kessler Field with the game tied at 7-7. We'll be right back. Brought to you by William Matar. Welcome back to Kessler Field where there's some fans excited for this ball game and, and why not? It's 7-7 to start the second quarter as both teams have been moving the ball offensively. And Kanish is trying to score some points here as they approach the Just Pizza delivery zone and they're going to the air. The pass from Brusco a little low as he was trying to find his favorite target, Jaden Clark, and that's incomplete, setting up a third and nine. That's when you see how young the, the quarterback is. The same type of play that St. Fran, uh, sorry, St. Francis had come across with the man uh, to see if it's zone or man coverage. The young man was that came across in in in. Uh, it came across the middle there. It was open in the flat. Sorry, my tongue. I was tripping on it there for a second, but happens to the best of us. Nothing, nothing to worry about. So it'll be <laughs> third and nine for the Crusaders offense. Brusco in shotgun. And he hands it off. Kimball trying to do something out of nothing, but the St. Francis defense gobbles him up, and that's going to set up an interesting fourth down call for the Crusaders offense. Well, you've got a guy with a leg, but I think that this is four down territory because you know, you're not giving up much if you, if you turn it over to St. Francis. It's still they got to go the you know 80 yards to, to score a touchdown. Right now, I just think you try to work down in here and get the first down. And that's what Canisius is thinking as well as they keep their offense on the field. Unofficially, it would have been around a 38-yard field goal if they decided to kick it. So right on the, the edge of Dion's uh, kicking range. But we'll see Canisius keep the offense out there. Brusco in shotgun. Kimball in motion. Brusco rolls to his right. He throws it out. And this is going to be just out of the... Stretched arms of Jaden Clark. He was open, but the throw a little bit too far. Nice play scheme, and it's it's the effort there. It's going to be there again. Nice job. Nice play call. Just a bit beyond the man's reach. They had everything lined up on the play except for the execution. As you can see, Clark got a hand, but it was just a little bit past his outstretched arm. So St. Francis gets a defensive stop and they'll take over possession after the turnover on downs. And Welka hands it off on first down. That's Hardy. And he gets down to the 24, but there is another flag on the play. And this will be holding on the Red Raiders. If I'm not mistaken, we're looking at about six or seven penalties to one in the last in the last uh, quarter here, in the first quarter here. The Red Raiders definitely have taken their fair share of penalties early in this contest. Holding offense, ten yard penalty for the spot. Still first down. <laughs> They've had five penalties for 50 yards in just the first quarter and now this offensive possession here. So that's quite a bit of penalty yardage to take early in a contest. Welka going to the air. He's going to keep it himself and roll out on first down and gets it to about the 16-yard line. You know, Canisius right now has got a bend-but-don't-break type of defensive scheme. 
and you can and right now what I love is is that you're not seeing St. Francis get behind them like they did in the first quarter. They've made some nice adjustments. The defensive ends are keeping their outside containment and forcing them up inside. And Caden Wayne was uh, the player who had the play there. He's been an impressive guy for the Crusaders defense. He clocks in at 6'2", 200 pounds, so he's a junior to look out for on this Canisius defense. Welka pressured and he's hit and that causes a low throw as he was trying to get it out to Andrew Lindstrom, but the Crusaders defense all over Welka. You know, you put yourself in these second and long, third and long situations, the defensive ends can just pin their ear back and come. Great rip from the outside, getting low on the quarterback. That was great disruption by the def right defensive end. That was Mason Allnut who had the pressure, and then after the play, he jogged off and went down on the sidelines for a minute as he took a seat, but he's back up walking, and it'll be third and long for the Red Raiders offense. Welka all alone in shotgun. Looking towards his left, he has his man, that's Lindstrom for the completion, but that's gonna be well short of the first down, setting up our first punting situation of the afternoon. I love what we're seeing here. You know, you see the coaches, you know, they're making great calls. Right now, you can't coach the penalties. And the penalties have been drive killers and energy killers for St. Francis so far in the, in the later part of the first quarter going into the second. So Jaden Clark is deep for the Crusaders on the return. Grant Rybzinski out to punt for St. Francis and it's a, a low punt but some decent yards and a good roll for the Red Raiders as that'll go all the way down to the 42 yard line for where Canisius will start their next offensive possession of the game. Great field position, and now the key for them to go up is to kind of grind the clock down here a little bit, give their defense a little time to sit and rest. You're starting to see guys like Allnut who's playing out, you know, playing out of his, you know, out of his mind right now, but he's little, little dingers can take away from your defense because they've been on the field a lot longer than St. Francis has. I'd expect Canisius to give the ball to their star running back, uh, Kimball a bit on this drive. He's already over 80 rushing yards so far on the afternoon. Motion on the play by Love, and it's a handoff to Kimball, who takes it close, and this will be a first down for the Crusaders. That play good for an express windows first down, now installing windows as low as 329 dollars within five to six weeks. Great blocking up front. The best part is you're starting to see the O-line get up to the linebackers, and that is gonna be the key for him breaking long runs like he did in the very beginning of the game. And not to overdo it, but anytime Kimball gets the ball, you feel like he has the ability to score on that given play. It's actually Hernandez in the backfield on this play as Brusco goes to there looking after Love, but that'll be incomplete as it falls through his hands. That's the first incompletion thrown to the out, the out route or the hitch route by the young man. He's, he's completed his first two in the beginning, and that's just keeping everybody honest, taking what they give you. Good decision by the young man. Just got to catch that kind of a football. And when looking at the Canisius receivers so far, it's mostly been Jaden Clark who entered today with 19 receptions for 280 yards and two touchdowns. But Jack Colonnen has been good as well, five receptions for 87 yards, and he has a long of 48. And on second down, it's a run by Hernandez. And he powers his way up the middle down to the 40 yard line, a gain of seven yards on second down. Great quick hitter, nice drive by the front, maintaining their blocks, allowing the, line, the running back to get to linebacker depth. Go, go, go. 
And as Canisius gets ready for this third down play, stay tuned for the UB Bulls halftime show, UB Bulls football, family affordable fun. We'll showcase our Aesthetic Associates Center scholar athletes presented by Todd Shatkin, participating school administrator interviews, Thursday night lights and Friday night rival highlights from across the country. And another big play by Canisius as they pick up an Express Windows first down. Express Windows now installing windows as low as 329 within five to six weeks. As this young man rolls out to his left, he's becoming more and more impressive as the game goes on. Coach Krasanski is known for developing quarterbacks like Joe Licata, Sam Castronova in the past. This young man's showing a lot of moxie. And you know what makes it a little bit easier as a quarterback? When you have a target like Jaden Clark, who is going to be a Division I talent at the next level. Defense. We got 12 out here. And that's a penalty on the Canisius Crusaders, as you could hear the ref at the end of the play saying, you have 12 out here. Well, maybe that's why the play went so well. You know? So that'll set up a first and 15 for the Canisius offense at the St. Francis 30-yard line. Kimball in the backfield. And this is a handoff to their big man. And he gets some yardage back as there's a flag at the end of the play. And that's a face mask on St. Francis as they were trying to take down Amare Ridgeway. Nice little change up from the, you know, the, the foul, face mask, defense, half the distance to the goal, first down. Nice little change up. You're seeing these great scat backs and large running backs getting big chunks. You got to give the fullback a little bit every now and then. And he got up there, get a nice job, and drew the face mask as well. So following the penalty, that'll get Canisius inside the Just Pizza delivery zone as they have the ball on the 12-yard line. Brusco rolling to his right, and he'll get the connection to Jaden Clark inside the 10, down to around the seven-yard line for a gain of about five on first down. Both teams have a great knack of playing cover zero or man coverage down here. And this is just a really nice throw and catch. The guy comes back for the ball. Just, you can't have better coverage than that either. Brusco seems very comfortable so far against the St. Francis defense. Last week against St. Joe's, it was a, a bit of a rainy game. Tough for quarterbacks to really get their, their hands on the proper spots on, on the football. And this week, you obviously can see him letting it out well. And it's Kimball on second down. He's running it up the middle. and. That looks like it might be enough for the first down. And they're going to rule him just short of the first. Actually, nope, they rule it is a first down. So that's another Express Windows first down. Now installing windows as low as 329 within five to six weeks. Canisius with a lot of success just pounding the rock in the first half of this contest. Very controlled, very disciplined drive here. And they have a reverse. It's Jaden Clark, and he's going to walk this in for the touchdown. Canisius with a little bit of trickeration to get back on the board. This touchdown brought to you by the Firth Jewelers. Go forth to Firth. When we talk about chess match, this is the type of stuff that Jerry Smith had up on Canisius last year. Um, I just knew that Coach Krasanski was going to come in here prepared, doing a great job, great game plan both uh, on both sides of the ball. But right now we're seeing the better moves by Canisius and better discipline by Canisius. And, and the extra point is up and good as Canisius takes a 14-7 lead over St. Francis. We will take a quick timeout brought to you by William Matar.
And you can see the Kanisha's student section having some fun following the Crusaders touchdown run by Jaden Clark to put Kanisha's up in front, 14-7, midway through the second quarter. Close captioning tonight brought to you by Bobcha Pierogies. Always fun to see the student sections get involved. Scott? You know, it's a great rivalry. You know, it's a little quiet on the St. Francis side. Uh, and again, it's, it's to no fault of, you know, except St. Francis. They've had too many penalties and they've allowed Canisius to get their momentum back. And there's a look at the Costanzo's kickoff brought to you by Costanzo's Bakery and that's another touchback by the Crusaders as St. Francis will get ready to start their next offensive possession. And it's such a weapon to have a kicker that has a leg like that. I know we talked about it early, but it's not often you, you see touchbacks in the high school game. Well, you're talking about special teams being a factor. And right now they have the better kicking game. Uh, they, you know, they're making fewer mistakes and their offense is very balanced right now. I think that St. Francis has put themselves with penalties into such long situations that their game has become pretty much one dimensional. And that gives Canisius an opportunity to make adjustments and create more momentum. And we're gonna take a look at the drive summary for Canisius, eight plays, 58 yards, three minutes and one second, capped off by a Jaden Clark two yard touchdown run as you saw in the field. Welka doing his best just to avoid a dangerous situation as he goes down and that's a big loss for the St. Francis offense on first down. Well, you're starting to see the speed of the defensive line for Canisius overwhelm the size because they're double teaming at the point of attack. The snap has to be on point or it shuts down the entire efficiency of the St. Francis offense. Welka did his best right there to just avoid a disaster on that play. And that'll put the Red Raiders behind the chains as it sets up a second and long, officially a second and 15. If I'm right, that's this is the fourth drive in a row that they've been in second and plus 10. They've been putting themselves behind the chains a lot early in this contest. Welka's pass on second down is tipped at the line of scrimmage. And then there's some pressure late as Welka is slow to get back up following the hit. Those DNs are just pinning their ears back on that second and long. And this is one of those tough spots when you're taking a look at the hit that Welka took at the end of the play. Yeah, that Wayne is Caden Wayne. You know, is wearing number 46. I, when I was at the University of Buffalo, we had a little 40, number 46 that we talked about. And uh, you know, is currently playing for the Los Angeles Chargers. I wonder if that's why he's wearing the jersey number. A little Khalil Mack action there. I was going to say a little known player that might be in the Hall of Fame one day. St. Francis going deep on third down, and is that caught? That is completed. Welka finds his man Evan Knocker once again down the field. This guy is Mr. Explosive for the St. Francis offense. And you gotta give you gotta give Welk a quarter. You, you gotta give Welk a lot of credit here. He's standing in the pocket, just took a couple big hits, and he put himself out there and answered. Nice job by that young man. When in doubt for this Red Raiders offense, go deep. And that was a pretty pass and connection for the St. Francis offense, getting it all the way down to the 45-yard line for an express windows first down, now installing windows as low as 329 within five to six weeks. And on first down, Wilka keeps it himself. He's down to the 30, one man to beat, down to the 10, five, touchdown, St. Francis. Landon Wilka, 55 yards to get St. Francis within one pending the extra point. Now, if you want to understand chess matches, this was Jerry Smith going after the king because he's been watching the DN uh, all nut come up field almost unabated the last quarter, and all he did was read, and the quarterback replaced him underneath and took it all the way to the house. Welka showed some serious serious speed on that play on the touchdown. The Firth Jewelers touchdown go forth to Firth and we said in entering this game look out for RPOs, look out for Welka as a runner and he's showing early in this contest. Yeah you think I can just put in there 
<laughs> well, I can also run the ball quite well as well. Well, what a great, what a great call. They're going for a two-point here to take the lead. Welka in shotgun. Man in motion. He's looking to run it himself. Going to the air. And this one caught, but there is two flags on the left side of the field. Now a third flag goes down. We'll have to await the call. He may have been downfield, crossed the line, and then come back over the line and threw the ball. And that is the call and the most logical explanation. That looked like that was originally set to be a run for Welka and ended up keeping the play alive. It was amazing that they even converted on that situation. And I don't know if you heard that. They actually had offsetting calls on that play, so it'll be another uh, conversion attempt from the same spot. You know, great look at Jerry Smith there. You know, every, you know, just the ability to see something, a weakness that was considered a strength earlier for Canisius, and then to put a play to give him right back in the game. And they're lucky to have another opportunity for this two point conversion. So, Welka in shotgun with Hardy to his left. And this is a high snap, and Welka is going to be thrown down in the backfield. That was Arno Mabio with the tackle for a loss. And it'll be Kanisha staying in front 14 to 13. We said that this was gonna be a close game. Last year in the second time they played each other it was 21 to 20. So we'll head to a quick break with the Kanisha Crusaders leading 14 to 13. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Kessler Field, and a reminder, stay tuned for the UB Bulls halftime show, UB Bulls football, family affordable fun. We'll showcase our Aesthetic Associate Center scholar athletes presented by Dr. Todd Shatkin, participating school administrator interviews, Thursday night lights, and Friday night rivals, highlights from across the country, first half highlights, and more. As we get ready for the Costanzo's kickoff by St. Francis, we have a one point game with the Crusaders in front, 14 to 13, and a little squib kick here by St. Francis. And there's room for a big return for Canisius. As that was Amari Wallace taking it all the way down inside the 30 yard line for the Crusaders on a wonderful return. Well, I'll tell you what, Coach Krasanski has his guys prepared because last year when they played on the very first time, a play like that was recovered. You know, they come out, the same formation, but what a great heads up play by that young man. And it just, just got past everybody else that was pursuing the football. And we actually saw, I believe it was Amari Wallace earlier in the game with a carry. I might be getting my numbers confused right now at the moment, but showed tremendous speed there to get to the outside and take it all the way down to the 23 yard line. Well, it just shows you the, the talent on both sides and the depth on both sides of this of, of either one of these teams. So Canisius with the ball actually on the 28 and it's a handoff on first down and that's a nice gain down inside the 15 yard line as that was Jason Love who got the ball for the Crusaders for Coach, Express Windows first down. Coach Krasianski is a step ahead right now. The motion came to a trips with a tight end form and there was no adjustment by St. Francis. As long as St. Francis is in the zone coverage, uh, Kanisha's is gonna take advantage of that. And here's a quick look at the scoring recap for St. Francis. Four plays, 80 yards, a minute and 45 seconds capped by uh, Landon Welka. Tremendous touchdown run to make it a one point game. And Canisius now continues to drive as they're all the way into the Just Pizza delivery zone and trying to add to their one point lead. We knew, Scott, that we'd see some offense today, but this game is just flying back and forth. 
Well, they got, it's got big plays and big penalties, you know, and that's what it's about today. It's about uh, St. Francis is still in it, but they've taken themselves out of their momentum with the big penalties that they've had throughout the, the, the late of the first quarter and into the second. And it's Canisius that is taking advantage of plays that have worked against them in the past. So it'll be second and six for the Crusaders. Brusco in shotgun rolling to his right. He has an open receiver, but this one almost intercepted. That went off the hands of Jason Love and was almost intercepted. I believe that was Evan Knocker on the play. Great job by the secondary again. We saw that the last time they were down in the red zone. And, you know, this time the defensive player made a great play on the ball. And that was one of those plays that could have made a huge momentum swing had the Red Raiders been able to pick up the interception. And there is a flag down on the play. Holding offense, 10 yards from the previous spot, still second down. A hold, holding penalty will push the Crusaders offense back 10 yards. Well, what drew that flag was they brought a blitz from the boundary side, from the short side of the field. And that uh, it was a very aggressive play down here. That's the first time we've seen uh, Coach Smith do that, bringing heat down inside the red zone. So it's officially second and 16 for the Crusaders offense. And this is Elijah Kimball rolling his way into the end zone, high stepping for the touchdown. There are a pair of flags late, but as it stands, it would put Canisius up in front. 20 to 13, but waiting on the official call. Taunting, I think, is gonna be the penalty here. We have a touchdown, ball into play, dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct, number zero. So the touchdown stands for Canisius as Kimball finds the end zone for the second time today and passes 100 yards on the ground. That's a first jeweler's touchdown. Being forced on the kickoff. Go forth to first. Now this is when you're going to appreciate it's Craig Krasansky that you have a kicker with a leg like he's got. Because, you know, you've been putting it out of the back of the end zone. Now he's going to be able to kick it just like everybody else does in Western New York High School. Get it down to the 15 or the 20. And with that touchdown, Kerry Kimball officially up to 119 rushing yards in the first half alone this afternoon. You know, he's a young man, so you know he's going to be a bit exuberant, but I hope he learns from that. And that'll definitely have an impact on the, on the next kickoff. The extra point is up. And the kick is good as Canisius takes a 21 to 13 lead over St. Francis with 3.20 left in the second quarter. Again, the young man just breaks through the line of scrimmage and everybody's up in the box to stop him. But once he gets past that second level defender, he is on his way to the end zone. And you can see the, the ability he has. You better catch him before he gets, gets to the outside. Or once he makes one person miss, he can take any to the house. And he is one of the special talents in not only this area, but the entire state of New York. See, everybody can have a great playbook, but it's when you call the play. Like when Jerry Smith was, was seeing all that come up field. He was able to get his quarterback off the, off the zone read and take it to the house. Right there, you saw everybody up inside five yards. And that is just, you gotta stay on your blocks, get to the second level, and let your man get to the heels of the linebackers and there's nobody else there to bring him down. The 22 yard touchdown run by Kimball caps a three play, 28 yard scoring drive for the Crusaders offense lasting one minute and 28 seconds. So we have 3.20 left in this first half as St. Francis will be looking to try to even things up on most likely one of their final possessions of the first half. Now what you just saw Coach Krasansky doing there, see him shaking his head? Look, he loves the kid. He's coaching the kid. He's telling, look, I love you, give me a hug, but don't do that silly stuff anymore. And the Costanzo's kickoff is 
off and brought to you by Costanzo's Bakery in St. Francis with a solid return out to the 37 yard line, but the Canisius fans energized by the hit at the end of the play. Well, this is the best field position that uh, St. Francis has started with in the second quarter. Let's see if they can, right now you've got three minutes left. You basically go, are going into a, you got plenty of time to move downfield. They've got to reestablish the run and they got to reestablish the, the, the tempo of this offense. You don't have to throw it downfield, but right now they got to use the clock up so they can go in and have another shot at that two point play and hopefully uh, bring it, uh, you know, to. And Jaden Clark got dinged up a little bit at the end of that play as he's standing on the sidelines right now looks to be okay but got off a little slow at the end of the kick return by St. Francis and on first down Welka keeping it and rolls out for a gain of a couple Canisius all over him just a great setup great hit it's a tough game and these guys are playing physical football. Glad to see the young man's okay. So it'll be second down in eight for the Red Raiders offense following a gain of two by Welka on the first down carry. Welka looking to his left. He has Tucker Job, And he's gonna take this to the Kanisha side of the field before getting smacked on the sidelines and there's a late flag in the territory of what you would expect to maybe be a personal foul on Canisius. See in my initial see that was just a great formed up tackle and he finished through the momentum. We're waiting what the call is from the officials. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense. 15 yards penalty to the, on the end of the run. It's first down. We're going to take a look at what took place at the end of the play as Job gets smacked on the play. Just a great, I mean, you could make a call for some helmet to helmet, but after the play, yeah, that's absolutely a flag. You don't need to have that kind of stuff. And that sets up the Red Raiders with the ball on the 33 yard line as they put together a drive towards the end of the second quarter. And the first down pass by Welka is complete. That's William Hansen, the tight end, getting a solid gain of around five on first down. Nice outside clearing route by the, uh, by the, by the outside wide receiver to clear the, the flat for the inside wide receiver. Nice job. And, nice and little the, scheme. The thing with with St. Francis too is they move the ball so quickly sometimes through the air, where you don't really want to give Canisius the ball back with too much time either. So, uh, will be interesting to see how they manage the clock and try to move the ball in the final minute here. It's a carry by Hardy, who takes it up the middle before being thrown back, but that'll get down to around the 26 yard line, setting up a third and a few. That's about the fourth time you've seen Welka have. Uh, issues with the snap so far. A couple went over high. He's got good hands, but even on his uh, first run on this last series, he was bobbling the snap. Definitely something to keep an eye out for uh, the rest of the game today. There have been a, a few uh, struggles in that department today uh, for St. Francis and a big third down for the Red Raiders offense as the Canisius crowd starts making some noise. Hardy gets the carry, breaks it inside, has the yardage for the first down, but there is a flag in the area of holding on St. Francis, and that's what the call is. Really work, Ketter. The Red Raiders have just been hurting themselves so much with self-inflicted penalties so far this afternoon. They have seven penalties for 71 total yards in the first half alone.
So that'll make it a third and about 13 for the St. Francis offense. I promise you Coach Krasanski has a two minute package together here if they're fortunate Bowling enough to get the ball back. From the previous spot, still third down. Minute 35 remaining in the second quarter. Still plenty of time for the St. Francis offense. Wilka has a man and that's his favorite target, Damone Allen who Brings down the reception, but another flag on the field. Looks like we have a lineman down the field. And that's an eighth penalty on St. Francis. It's the second one with an ineligible man downfield or man downfield. The quarterback was the first one and now an offensive lineman. So that'll push it back from third and 13 to third and 18. Ineligible man downfield, offense, five yards from the previous spot, third down. It makes life a lot more difficult when you keep making these penalties and putting yourself back behind the chains. How many times today alone have we seen St. Francis facing a second or third and 15 or 16? Well, Canisius gets that rare call that puts you inside their 30 yard line to go in with three minutes and some change to go. Now you're backed up with a minute left to go and it's, you know, it's four down football. Clock down under a minute. Welka being pressured, rolling to his left. Has a man wide open. This is a reception. That's going to be a first down and a lot more as it's Andrew Lindstrom once again. Lindstrom has been all over the field in this first half. He has been making big play after big play. Now there's a mistake here by the defensive end, Allnut. Allnut never should have given up his, in, his outside containment. He took an inside path to the quarterback. Had he kept his outside containment, most likely that, that play would not have happened. So the clock approaching the 32nd mark. And on first down, it's a carry to Hardy. And he's taken down as St. Francis enters the Just Pizza delivery zone in their last first down brought to you by Express Windows. Now installing windows as low as 329 within five to six weeks. And St. Francis will take a timeout with around 26 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Trying to end this one with a touchdown would be pivotal for this Red Raiders offense going into the half. Yeah, because right now you're taking a look and it doesn't seem that they have the confidence in their kicker that, uh, that Kanishas has in theirs. So you can almost bet that the next couple plays, it's going to be just trying to get the ball in the end zone before the clock runs out. And after running the ball on first down, you'd almost expect them to go back to the air. That was maybe trying to catch them by surprise with the first down carry. Yeah, I would expect a couple, you know, at least they're going to go to the end zone at least two, 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 two more times here. And, and just a reminder, prior to the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll be selecting the Vinyl Outlet defense play of the game, the Vinyl Outlet WNY's best porch deck and fence installations. And so far on the afternoon, Landon Welka up to 209 passing yards, 80 yards on the ground, 289 total yards. And his team is losing. That is remarkable. Landon Welka's having a tremendous game, and he sees his well, like, team like down said, by eight. When you have nearly 100 yards of penalties, it doesn't matter what you're doing with your arm and your feet. If everybody else is making mental mistakes, that's what you call change on the field. Welka with the snap. First read not there. Taking it himself and he's gonna get sandwiched for no gain on second down. And he's signaling for a spike, but it's third down for St. Francis. Clock is down to 10 seconds, nine seconds. They spike it. So there's eight seconds remaining in this second quarter with a fourth down situation for the Red Raiders. That was not what St. Francis wanted to see on second down as it forced them in a situation where they had to spike the ball just to save the clock. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, Jerry's going to have to do some uh, 
get on his players a little bit at halftime. The lack of discipline is costing them the game so far, uh, but they're still in it because they've had outstanding play by their quarterback and wide receivers. There's a look at the St. Francis kicker, but the Red Raiders are going to go for it here on fourth down and 10. Welka with the snap. His first read not there. He's going to his left, and this is going to be low and incomplete as the Canisius Crusaders come up with a huge defensive stop to get the ball back with three seconds remaining. Just expect Canisius here to take a little knee, go in, have time up. We'll get a chance to talk to Coach Krasanski before he goes in at the half. And that is a tremendous stand by Canisius. Their defense has been a little bit of bend but don't break in this first half, but it doesn't matter when you're leading by eight going into the half. Well, they're giving up yards, but they're keeping them out of the end zone. Or I should say St. Francis is keeping themselves out of the end zone. So with three seconds left, Kanisha's actually showing shotgun on first down, but this is going to be a knee and the final play of the half. So going into halftime, this is a 21-13 lead by Canisius over the St. Francis Red Raiders. What, what, what are your observations so far, Scott? Well, I think that you've got to go in as, uh, as Jerry has got to go in. He's got to be a little tough on his kids. Um, you know, they're making too many mental mistakes. This is a great, two great football teams, but, uh, you know, you've got, you got to eliminate the mistakes in the second half. And we're about to coach to Coach Kurzanski right now. Just waiting a second. Coach, uh, talk about that defensive stand at the end of the half. How important was it for you guys to get a stop right there? It's good. You know, Wilk is a kid who his legs are killing us, but we uh, we just shorted it up at halftime. But, no, that's a good stand. We're still up eight. We get the ball coming out of the half here. So, um, so certainly that's a big play for us. Hey, Coach, I, I love your, your – I think you're just doing a great job in your play calling. We watched All Nut uh, get a little over penetration. Uh, earlier on and they took advantage of it but you are staying one step ahead here in this game and what are you going to tell your guys when you go into halftime right now coach uh, defensively Pilkey right we uh you know he, he got up the field and we, did, we didn't fold our outside linebackers late to fold so that was our one touchdown but just keep hammering the rock man we we like to run the football throw it efficiently and and just keep it going man we get the ball and if we score here we go up a couple scores so thanks a lot coach good Thank luck in guys. the second half that was Coach Kurzanski for the Canisius Crusaders as we're going to head to a halftime break brought to you by the William Attar Law Offices and the Vinyl Outlet. Football, family, affordable, fun. Welcome back to Kessler Field where you're watching the UB Bulls halftime show. UB Bulls football, family, affordable, fun. Canisius leading St. Francis at the half, 21-13 to in an exciting offensive game. And we're going to take a quick look at our scholar athletes. Dr. Todd Chatkin from the Aesthetic Associates Center is proud to present Thursday Night Lights Aesthetic Associates Scholar Athletes of the Week. All-Stars are now entered for a $5,000 scholarship at the end of the season. Congratulations to the Aesthetic Associates Scholar Athletes of the Week. We're back at Kessler Field where Canisius is leading St. Francis 21-13. to 
We will have more after the break, brought to you by William Matar and presented by The Vinyl Outlet. Watching the UB Bulls football halftime report. UB Bulls football. Family. Affordable. Fun. Time now for the Thursday Night Lights Rivals highlights from across the country. The best Thursday Night Lights and Friday Night Rivals highlights from across the country. Gaze for corner. That pass. Whoa! Oh, caught! One-handed catch! Under the rain that has been steady since kickoff, and it's a fake. It's a fake running up the middle, and with the first down is Omeza Danian. Some trickery on special teams, and Green Hill converts. Up on their own three-yard line, Judkins. Oh, it's oh. hit hard, right oh. in the hands of Landon Crozier for the big red touchdown. Oh, right place, right time, man. Great defensive play. Coordinators thinking two plays here, balls on the ground. Vogel's trying to make something out of nothing, it does. He's still on his feet. Vogel to the 15, to the 10. Touchdown, Vogel! Talk about stick to itiveness. That play was blown up, and that young man just wouldn't give up. Field goal to Tim. If they're inside, they'll probably go for it a third time. Man. Compton trying to find a way, and he's going to run out of defenders. He still has the football. Throw it into the end zone. Is it a catch? They call it a catch. And those were your Thursday night lights, Friday night rival highlights from across the country. We'll be right back after a timeout brought to you by William Matar and the Vinyl Outlet. Watching the UB Bulls football halftime report. UB Bulls football. Family. Affordable. Fun. And welcome back to Kessler Field where Canisius leads St. Francis 21 to 13 during halftime. And we have some exciting highlights to show you from this first half as the Crusaders 
took an eight point lead into halftime. It was the Red Raiders though, scoring first as Welka found his receiver, Evan Knocker, on an impressive touchdown pass. He's just been on fire all first half. Aside from the penalties, it's all been this young man doing it with his legs and his arm. And Kimball quickly responded two plays later on a tremendous run getting to the end zone. Great blocking by the offensive line getting to the second level. And that young man's vision and the ability to cut on a dime took him to the end zone. Welka went back to the air and Tucker Job unable to hold on as it was an impressive play by Canisius Jaden Clark getting the fumble recovery and he ends up taking it in for a touchdown a little bit later in the second quarter. You know, again, Coach krasansky has got a couple wrinkles here or there and he's one step ahead of St. Francis. Just too many mistakes from St. Francis, self-inflicted. And St. Francis ends up getting within one after Landon Welka has a tremendous run, keeping it himself, finding the end zone to make it a 14-13 game. Then a little trickery that usually works for St. Francis has a bit of a backfire as Canisius is prepared for the onside kick. And Elijah Kimball then finishes off the drive with his second touchdown of the afternoon, high stepping into the end zone for a 22 yard touchdown run to put Canisius in front 21 to 13. And here are the first half stats with St. Francis. You can see the, the total yards, they're getting yardage, but Canisius, they're finding a way to get a lot of things done as well. And we're joined by St. Francis head coach right now, Jerry Smith. Jerry, you guys have been able to move the ball quite effectively in the first half, but unable to finish for a touchdown at the end of the second quarter. What do you guys need to do in the second half in order to finish these drives and find a way to get back on top? Well, we just got to stop shooting ourselves in the foot. That's, that's number one. Um, and we have to tackle better, a lot better. Uh, we're there a few times and he just makes a quick move and we stop our feet and you can't do that against that type of back. You coach, your quarterback is fantastic. 279 yards total offense. Uh, what did you have to say to him? Just kind of keep things moving in the right direction? Yeah, we got a couple guy, young guys in there at receivers that are making mistakes with routes and stuff like that and that's causing some issues. So we, he could be doing a hell of a lot better uh, if some of the guy we just have to some, give him a little bit more support. Coach, thank you very much, and good luck in the second half. Okay, you're welcome. So right now, the, the score at halftime, St. Francis in front, 21-13 to 13 over Canisius. What do you expect in the second half, Scott? I, I think that exactly what you just heard in his voice, he's, got some, he, he's been direct with his kids. He said what he needs to do and you'll see them come out better in the second half. And we're going to toss to a quick timeout brought to you by the William Matar offices and the vinyl outlet. Canisius leading 21-13 to 13 at the half. And welcome back to the Kessler Field where Canisius is leading St. Francis 21 to 13. And here's a look at Elijah Kimball who has been dominant on the ground so far for the Crusaders. Eight carries for 119 yards and two touchdowns. Scott, he's been fantastic so far. Well, he's just a dynamic player, you know, but you got to give credit to the offensive line up front. The big guys at Canisius have been playing tremendous football on both sides of the ball in the first half. I expect that to continue. And Canisius will get the ball first to open the second half. This kickoff brought to you by the Costanzo's Bakery. And the second half is underway with a, a little pooch kick. And it's Jaden Clark who gets it for Canisius. He's going to take this past midfield and the Crusaders with fantastic field position to open up their first offensive possession of the second half. Again, Coach Krasansky, when I spoke to him this week, he said that special teams was going to play and have a big impact. They are prepared for everything that, that got them last year from St. Francis. They've benefited twice now from two, an onside and a pooch kick, and they've been prepared for it. Nice job by Canisius in their readiness for this game. So the Crusaders starting this possession on the St. Francis 48-yard line. We talked about Kimball's impact in the first half, already over 100 yards, and looking to add to it to open the second half. And he has a lane. 
and no one is going to get him. This is going to be a 48-yard touchdown for Elijah Kimball and a perfect start for the Crusaders offense as they find the Firth Jewelers touchdown. Go for two first. It's the exact same play that scored him his very first touchdown. A little misdirection to hold the linebackers in play. Great job by the backside pulling guard up to the linebacker. Broke him to the outside. Great running with his eyes. This young man is going to be a big-time Division I football player. And with that 48-yard touchdown, Kimball now up to nine carries for 167 yards and three touchdowns on the afternoon. Unbelievable performer for the Crusaders. And the extra point is up and it is good as Canisius increases their lead to a two possession game. And we're gonna take a quick timeout brought to you by the William Matar Law Offices in the Vinyl Outlet. Canisius leading St. Francis 28 to 13 as we head back for the start of the third quarter. Actually, well, the third quarter already started. Elijah Kimball with a 48-yard touchdown. And Scott, tell me what it's you're seeing. It's just another power play. They get a great job by, you know, getting the, the, the guard coming back across, running it to the short side of the field. And then it's all Kimball once he gets into the into open space. You're not going to be able to bring this young man down or follow him or catch him up from behind. I've been... I've had the pleasure of watching him the last two weeks, and he is one electric player. Here's the scoring drive summary. One play, 48 yards, 11 seconds. As simple as that for, for Canisius whenever they hand the ball off to Elijah Kimball. Not a bad problem to have. So now it is officially a two-score game with the Crusaders in front as they kick off. The Costanzo's kickoff brought to you by Costanzo's Bakery. The Red Raiders on the return. Well defended by Canisius as Damone Allen got down to the 24 yard line. Now St. Francis has had no shortage of their own big plays, uh, you know, but the problem is right now it's been field position and second and third and longs because of penalties. We showed you the yardage coming out of the break. Quarterback Landon Welka has already gotten to 290 yards today alone. So Welka has definitely been explosive. The problem has been more St. Francis not being able to finish these drives. Well, the mental mistakes, and when you have, a, when you have two teams that are this similar and this talented, you can't make the mistakes that St. Francis has been making. And you've got to be able to stop the run. The, you make adjustments on the big plays that beat you in the first half. And that did not happen because they beat him with the exact same play, that power pull with, with uh, Kimball up on the inside to the house. And on first down, Welka's pass to Edward Gothier is incomplete. A little bit short on the passing attempt. And here's a situation that... I don't know if St. Francis anticipated being in towards the end of the first half. You're driving with a chance to try to tie the game, and then next thing you know, the next time you have the ball back, you're down 15 points. Well, I don't think it's time to panic because they've shown they can make the big play at any time. you gotta, you got to reestablish the tempo of your offense, get some first downs, stop making the stupid penalties, and you're right back in the game. And a solid gain on second down on a run up the middle by Hardy to set up a third and five. Caden Wayne in on the tackle for Canisius. And here's some numbers right now for Landon Welka. 209 passing yards, 81 on the ground, 290 total in the first half alone. Yeah, he's a scholarship level player, makes great decisions, throws the ball with ease. And this is exactly what they have to get back into. Chunks and chunks of yardage, eat up some of the clock, 
keep Canisius on the sideline so their big play guys can't hurt you like they have been. And that's a first down completion from Welka to Damone Allen for an Interstate Batteries first down. Interstate Batteries outrageously dependable. And when Welka and the Franny's offense have things going, they can make it look very easy at times. That was a smooth third down completion, well executed, and they get the first down. Tremendous defensive play by Canisius as they get a tackle for loss in the backfield to blow up the play. Big George Wiley, number 75, great uh, motor here. And you know, this is, if they play gap football, the mistakes that they've had so far in Canisius has been one over pursuit and another one where the DN took an inside uh, rush. Right now you see really good, good scheme football. You can still allow the DN to come inside, but they got a linebacker that scrapes and maintains outside containment. That's why that tackle was made. And on second down, Welka, Looking to throw, getting to the outside, and that's going to be a sack for the Crusaders. That was number 52 on Canisius. Anthony Pitts with the sack. Guaranteed, not because we spoke to Coach Krasanski about it, but because Coach Krasanski went and made the right De uh, decisions. Keep your outside containment no matter what. That pushes the quarterback up into the box and that's where you make the tackle. That's good fundamental football. Nice job. And a very important play for the St. Francis offense after Canisius just scored a touchdown to make it a 15 point game. They're facing a third and 18. See, by Anthony Pitts playing as disciplined as he did at the D-end, he also earns the sack because he did not stop his motor. Kept his feet running and got off the block. And we're going to see a false start on St. Francis's. They got a little bit of a head start at the receiver position, and that'll put it even offense. further back. Five-yard penalty. It's still third down. You can feel the energy changing in on this field. Canisius is playing with reckless abandon, but now they're playing with discipline. And this has been a matchup that in the last couple of years, St. Francis has had the better of Canisius, but the Crusaders looking much better today. Last year, the two matchups were a 41-24 victory and a 21-20 victory for St. Francis over Canisius. Well, look at Coach Krasanski. I'm telling you, you got to tip your hat to the man. He's doing a great job in preparation for this game. Welka getting pressured, steps up in the pocket. He's going to launch it. This one almost intercepted. Goes through the hands of a diving Amir Hernandez who almost made an incredible interception on the play. Well, another great uh, adjustment that you see Canisius making. Canisius, Canisius has had guys under 10 yards to stop the run early. Now you're not, you're not gonna see anybody getting behind them now, especially when they're flushing the quarterback out. Great pressure, but a great ability to not let any ball get behind him. And that was a tough situation for Welka, who was just trying to avoid getting sacked and trying to make a play any way he could. The punt is up for St. Francis. It's a decent one at that. Jaden Clark takes it after a bounce, and he's going to be taken down out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And Canisius, if you're on offense, you just got to keep feeding the ball to Elijah Kimball. Well, you know, we, we started out with, with you know, uh, the beginning of the third quarter, and it took a matter of seconds to score. Right now, the clock is your friend. If you can run the ball, obviously, you want to score as many times as you can, but now you want to hand the ball to that young man the rest of the game because the, the fewer times that... Uh, St. Francis can get on the field, the better your chances of winning this game. And we want to give a thanks to Louis Texas Red Hot, our food provider today at this wonderful football game featuring St. Francis at Canisius. So the Crusaders take over. It's a reverse on first down and well defended by St. Francis as Jaden Clark only gets a gain of about two. 
But those are the types of things you still have to have. You got to have that little mix up so they don't get too comfortable at bringing the corner because that's what they've done in the past. They brought the corner boundary blitz uh, early in the first half and uh, you know they're staying home right now. Nice job uh, there on the young on the tackle by uh, Caden Knight. Caden Wright, excuse me. It was a very quick uh, reverse uh, on that play. Normally you see a little longer forming ones, and that should be a penalty, and it is on St. Francis as Caden Wright got a little bit of a tug on the jersey, and that'll be a first down, I believe, for Canisius. We'll wait the call here. Pass interference, defense, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. Again, you know, we cannot have these types of mental mistakes. You, you know, the young man makes a play in the first route, you know, and he tries to, you know, to come back, but you can't pull on the man to come back for the football. And officially, that's 10 penalties on St. Francis for 91 yards on the afternoon. High snap, Brusco looking deep. He has Jaden Clark open, and he brings it down, and he's going to get all the way inside the five yard line. Down to the three getting right inside the Just Pizza delivery zone. That's an Interstate Batteries first down. Interstate Batteries outrageously dependable. When you get gashed, like they've been getting gashed on the run game, they bring a cross middle blitz that they call Bama X. And now this one goes up top and this young quarterback is coming of age here, man. He's throwing the ball out on the, on the fly and he's making touch passes where he has to. That's the first plus five pass he's had all day long. And this man is, this young man is emerging as a quarterback of the future of this team. Briscoe has been very impressive so far today. Hand off to Kimball. And that looks like it's gonna be just short of the goal line as he gets ruled down at the half yard line. What do you do? You hand it to him again? I think so. <laughs> Maybe three times in a row if you need to. If I was head coach at Canisius <laughs> and I had Elijah Kimball, if I had any of these running backs, I would just be pounding the rock continuously. Yeah. But you also just saw when you have Jaden Clark and you have Matteo Brusco, that's why you switch it up every once in a while. Yeah. I mean, I really love the game plan. Uh, I love what uh, uh, Coach Krasanski has been doing. Uh, and I think on the other side of the ball, they've been doing a nice job too, but just too many mistakes as we've emphasized, unfortunately, probably too many times tonight. And there's a quick time out here. And we just want to mention that tonight's close captioning is exclusively brought to you by Babsha's Pierogi. So coming out of this time out, we have a second and goal situation for the Crusaders. You expect them to just continue pounding the rock here? I don't see any reason to do anything else. You know, uh, right now, sometimes it's about straight ahead, power football, and sometimes the de when you can run it right through them, that's more demoralizing than having a big play on them, to be honest with you, especially down here. The one thing that is kind of interesting watching this game so far, having been at the Kenesha St. Joe's game last week, was that early on in that matchup, it looked like Canisius was going to dominate in the trenches, but St. Joe's had their moments where they actually did take over the game uh, with their D-line and offensive line at times. So far in this game, however, Canisius has been getting much better, uh, has gotten the better against St. Francis throughout this contest. Well, like we talk about, when we talk about big, big games like this, the fewer the mistakes, the, the, the more opportunity to win. And that's right where Canisius is right now. And it's Kimball with the ball, and he walks into the end zone for the touchdown. Kimball's fourth touchdown of the day, second of the second half, as he gets the Firth Jewelers touchdown. Go forth to Firth. Taking a little victory lap on the sideline. Good job. But this, uh, this is a well-oiled machine today. Um, Coach Krasanski, every play that they're putting in, it's a planned wrinkle. Uh, it's an adjustment. Uh, there's nothing that's being called off the cuff here by Coach Krasanski. I can tell you that right now as, as knowing him as I have over these years. And the extra point is up and good for Canisius as the Crusaders extend their lead to 35-13 with 7-14 remaining in the third quarter. We're going to take a quick timeout brought to you by the William Matar Law Offices and the Vinyl Outlet.
Welcome back to Kessler Field, and we want to give a quick thanks to Tim Hortons for providing us some coffee before this ball game. The crew greatly appreciated it as it helped them stay awake and get all the work that they needed prior to this contest. And the kickoff underway, that's the Costanzo's kickoff brought to you by Costanzo's Bakery. And that is well covered by Kanisha, says St. Francis can't even get to their own 20, and it's going to be some tough field position to start out for the Red Raiders offense. Well, you know, this is the this has been the tail of the tape for St. Francis. You know, some of it has been self-inflicted, but as we talked about earlier, and I'm going to keep coming back to it, special teams and having a kicker like that is a benefit. So on that scoring summary, four plays for 59 yards and capped off by a one-yard touchdown run by Elijah Kimball, who is now up to 11 carries for 170 yards and four touchdowns on the afternoon. I hope he's making NIL money for those, those sunglasses, <laughs> you know. You know, you never know now. You never know. It, it, you never, you that, never know. that could be at the high school level <laughs> in several places. You never know. <laughs> and on first down, it's a handoff. And this one goes for nothing as Canisius all over it. And this was George Wiley, again. Wiley once again and making the play. He's George Wiley the fifth, and that's probably his fifth great play of the day. So... Just great penetration, takes on the double team. Look at that. And that's three guys. That is just gut. And then he, then he did a little crawl just to let you know he's still got more in the motor. And that'll be a vinyl outlet defense play of the game nominee. Prior to the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll be selecting the vinyl outlet defense play of the game. The vinyl outlet, WNY's best porch deck and fence installations. So and we've said his name a couple times to Amer Wallace. Again, they're just, now they're starting to physically dominate St. Francis. The Battle of the Trenches has been going Canisius' way since the start of the second half and another third and long situation for St. Francis. And what makes this difficult is that you need the time to get these passing plays to develop, but the defensive line is able to get penetration and create these tough plays. Well, it starts with the energy that breaks out of the huddle. Right now, you're looking at the O-line here, pretty lethargic. And this one has a man, and that's the Just Bone like Allen, that. and he's gonna go the distance for the touchdown. Just like that. Just like that, St. Francis finds the end zone from over 80 yards out to make it a two-score game once again. 35 to 19 with 5.33 remaining. And that's a first jeweler's touchdown. The Go offensive forth. line holds up just long enough and the quarterback delivers on the spot. That is a college level throw of over 40 yards, hitting him on the run. Very impressive young man. I've said it to several people over the last week while preparing for this game. Landon Welka has one of the best arms of any high school quarterback in this area. You watch him, this is something that they do quite a bit, being able to expose teams down the field. And they're gonna go for two to try to cut this to a 14 point game. Welka two is outside, and they're gonna cruise in for the two point conversion. So this is back to being a two score game. St. Francis makes it 35 to 21. Now this is where Coach Smith has to be smart with his next kickoff. Kick it as deep as you can and make Canisius go the length of the field. Don't give him a short field here. Now you've got the momentum back, bury him three and out, and you are back in this football game because you're not going to stop that offense if they can still score that big that quick. And, and that's the thing. You look at the clock, and yes, it, it has felt that Canisius has kind of owned this half at times, it's a two touchdown game with 5.33 remaining. There's a ton of time in this ball game. You know, the offensive line holds up here long enough, gives his quarterback an ability. The seam has been there all day long, over the shoulder, drops it perfectly into the awaiting hands. And that young man, Damone Allen, has averaged six, 76 yards per game all season. I think he probably almost covered 60 yards of that. Was that about a 60 yard play? Oh, that was longer than 60. Okay. That, was, that was over 80. Well, guess what? In one play, he exceeded his average of 76 yards per game. We were just handed stats from inside the box. Landon Welka 
so far today. 13 of 19 for 303 passing yards, has two touchdowns in the air, and then he has that 50 plus yard touchdown run. He's had himself a night. Yeah, and only in only two and a half quarters. In St. Francis, kicks off the Costanzo's kickoff brought to you by oh boy. Costanzo's Bakery. And this one is on the ground, but it's going to roll out of bounds and stick with Kanisha says they start their next offensive possession at the 44 yard line. You know, I don't know if the St. Francis kicker has a leg to get it down there, um, but right now, uh, you know, cannot give Canisius this type of field position every single time. You know, that was almost, <laughs> that was almost gonna work for St. Francis, but the ball's just not bouncing for him the way that it used to. So prior to the game, I saw him kicking off from the 40 of the Canisius side, and he was kicking it towards the back of the end zone. So he did appear to have somewhat of a leg, but maybe more fear of Jalen Clark as a returner or some of the other guys on uh, the Canisius kick return unit and uh, not wanting them to get explosive plays. I'd that be more way. afraid of giving Kimball a short field to run every single time, to be honest with you. Very fair counterpoint. So Canisius starts their offensive possession from the 44. And on first down, St. Francis gets a stop, gain of about three yards for the Crusaders. Hey, that's a moral victory right there, okay? Now you're in second and medium. Um, now you can do something here. Bring a blitz. You're not sitting on your heels. They're not going deep. They've only gotten behind you once. Pack the box, but, but keep your linebacker at depth so they can read. I think they've been getting caught up too much, uh, and, and Kimball's just too quick when you, when, you're, when you don't have enough space to react to him and get to your gap with good fundamental um, pursuit. So that'll set up a second and seven for the Crusaders offense. Kimball to the left of Brusco in motion. Brusco looking to pass, now using his legs, and he has enough for a first down. That's an Interstate Batteries first down. Interstate Batteries, outrageously dependable. Now, when you see a young man like Brusco not only take advantage of getting onto the outside, but he's also directing his guy to get downfield. That's a great job by that young man, knowing exactly where he needs to get out to get the first down. Good work. So that moves the ball into St. Francis territory down to the 43-yard line. And as you mentioned, Canisius really all day, they've been dealing with shorter fields and that's been to their advantage. Brusco in shotgun. He hands it off to Kimball, who has a little bit of space to the outside, and he'll take it inside the 40 down to the 37. But there is a flag on the play, and the initial call is a holding on Canisius. It's one of those that's unfortunate because it's away from where the ball was going. You didn't have to get your hands to the outside if that's in fact what the call is. The chant from you can't do that started with the student Holding until they offense. realized it was on them. <laughs> Deep in the previous spot, still first out. The classic calling it a little bit prematurely. Yeah. And then <laughs> they got out two you can't quiet. do that's and they go, we just did that. You know? <laughs> and then getting very quiet after <laughs> very realizing quick, they were quick. wrong on the play. <laughs> Been a great crowd here today though. I mean, the energy is palpable, you know? Very fun atmosphere here at Kessler Field in West Seneca. Canisius with a nice student section on hand this afternoon. Brusco throwing it on first down. Some elusive moves, but that's gonna oh end boy. up being tackled for next to no game. Ruled down. Ruled down on the play as St. Francis was trying to say that it was their ball, but it'll remain with Canisius. That was Amir Hernandez who had the reception. Well, unfortunately, we don't have, uh, it looks like it could have been a fumble, but from up here, they don't have the use of replay, so it's gonna stand and stay with uh, Canisius. In the slow-mo, it does look like it 
It Ball does look out. like a fumble looking at the replay there, but it stands as down in very next play. It's a positive gain by Elijah Kimball. And over a course of a game, Scott, you've been at this level. You've coached at several different levels. Sometimes the breaks just don't go your way, and you can't, can't worry about it. You have to move on and just line up for the next play. Well, there were 100 years of playing football without uh, instant replay, you know, and that's the beauty of high school football is that you can go back and look at it now, but it's it's a it's still. I mean, look at these kids; they're playing hard, they're playing fast. Everybody's energized. This is this is great football in Western New York. Kamisha is calling a timeout prior to their third and ten offensive play. Now. Right now, I'm looking. That's their second timeout that he's called in the in the second half. Correct, Coach I believe, so. I believe so. Called one down inside the red zone and then called one here. I, I hope it doesn't come back to get him uh, because this is still a 14. It's a, it's a two two score game, and you know you're going to need those. You know that's when your kicker might come in if it's a tie football game. You might need that little extra timeout rather than this one right now. I don't know. We'll see. And a reminder, prior to the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll be selecting the Vinyl Outlet Defense Play of the Game. The Vinyl Outlet, Western New York's best porch, deck, and fence installations. And this is going to be an important defensive play for St. Francis once we come out of this break. Right now, Elijah Kimball up to 183 carry yards on four touchdowns and 13 carries. So. If you're Canisius right now, how are you attacking this St. Francis defense? And is this four down territory for you or would you consider punting? No, I'd spread them out, toss pitch it to my best running back and then get what you can get. And if it's manageable, go for it. But if not, you're up by two, bury them because you got to make sure that they can cover the length of the field and take as much time off as you can. So an important down for the St. Francis defense is they're looking desperately to get a stop Love in motion. Brusco pressured and he is sacked. That is a sack for St. Francis. Jake Suffoletto getting the pressure and taking down Brusco to get St. Francis the ball back. They brought that corner blitz three times from the boundary side and that's the first time they've gotten to it. So they knew that they were gonna have some success with it at some point in the day and what better time than now. Great job from the corner to the outside. Absolutely. The one thing you got to have is you got to have your back back there for Max Pro. They brought it because he came up into that formation. Otherwise, that corner blitz wouldn't have come. We talk about a chess match. That was a chess piece move right there. Important special teams play coming up. St. Francis has Edward Guthier the third back to return this punt. And we have a flag prior to the kick. 12. Delay a game. Okay. And it's a delay of game on Kanisha, so that'll set them back another five yards prior to the punt. And you can feel a little bit of the momentum switching hands right now as St. Francis has the, the ability to try to get their way back into this contest. Well, the next series for Kanisha's defense is the most important series of the game. The punt is up and this is a short one that goes out of bounds before the 30 yard line as St. Francis is gonna start their next offensive possession on the 32. And so far, Scott, tonight, it's mostly been St. Francis making explosive plays on offense and when they haven't been, it's been putting themselves in tough situations. How do they find a way to balance the explosiveness without hurting themselves at the same time? Well, when you have when you have explosive plays, the key is not to implode and, and shoot yourself in the foot. And so far you're starting to see, but to, to credit, credit the coaching staff, credit St. Francis, they're not giving up here. They keep battling back, they believe in themselves. This is why this is gonna be, this is gonna go down to the wire. This will come down to a field goal or a two point uh, extra point, whatever you, you want to call it, because this game is far from over. Welka going to his left. That one broken up. 
on the play. That was Xavier Gates Franklin who exploded to break up the pass and nearly had a chance at intercepting it. There's a great uh, matchup going on at the right tackle, Mike Harris and Allnut, and it, it is, it's very physical. Allnut's gotten the better. They've been flipping Allnut back and forth, right to left, the end. Um, but I think since he's been to the left-hand side, uh, number 52 has just done a great job, Mike Harris, on him on that last. He set out nice, stuffed him. There was a move back to the inside, uh, but 52 has is, is definitely stepped up his game since the first half. Second and 10 for St. Francis. This is an end around. This is a reverse, and they muffed the ball. And this is going to be recovered by Canisius as trickery gone wrong for the Red Raiders. And it'll be Crusaders' ball on the 20 yard line right inside the Just Pizza delivery zone. Sometimes you look at what the team's strengths are, okay? We talked earlier in the first half about the lateral speed of Canisius will cause problems for St. Francis if they try to get some type of uh, trickeration, as you said earlier. That was an absolutely, um, you know, pivotal play here in this, uh, in this point of the game, and I know that Coach Smith wants to get that one back. Sometimes you have to have that sense of when it's the right time to call a trick play, and Canisius you could see, had a feeling something was up uh, the Red Raiders' sleeve, and they get a crucial takeaway and already in great offensive field position to try to capitalize. And it's Elijah Kimball who does make them pay, waiting to see where he's ruled out. It looks like it's going to be down at the one-yard line. So Crusaders in great field position once again, but there is a flag. We're waiting to see what the call will be on the field. Same exact play, three different looks we've seen today. The motion basically gives you the same look as pulling the backside guard does, and it's gonna hold the linebackers and pull them or hold them long enough for, uh, for Kimball to get up inside that B gap and take it almost to the house like he just did again. Unfortunately for Canisius, this one is coming back following a penalty. Holding offense, 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. Just imagine what our score would be if there were half the penalties that we've had. That's Hoos is uh, Hoos gets upfield, does a great job with penetration, and again, the speed and the penetration of Canisius has been there all day long, especially when you talk about penetrating the second level, you're talking about Kimball, and he does that again here to put him right back in scoring position. And while that play was going on, Canisius picked up another first down, brought to you by Interstate Batteries, outrageously dependable. Okay, your coach Krasanski, what are you calling here? <laughs> I think you already know my, yeah, just, my, you know, my thought process. Uh, yeah, you have I, a running back with four touchdowns, yeah. you give him a chance at a fifth yeah, touchdown. I think so too. And some movement prior to the snap. This looks like it's on. False start. This will be a false start on Canisius, so they'll move back five yards. And after a lot of penalties on St. Francis early in this game, it's been Canisius that has been picking up quite and a few And they're still flags. up two touchdowns. They're still up yeah, two touchdowns. It's, it's, it's because the penalties that they're having are in the, the zone, in San, on, uh, on St. Francis's side of the ball, you know? Uh, they're not happening down inside their own 20, their own 10. So if you're gonna have penalties, you want it, you want it inside the red zone down here. And so far on the day, Kimball now up to 200 yards rushing on 15 attempts, trying to get a fifth touchdown on the ground. And we're gonna have a quick timeout by the officials. And right now we're under 30 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Sideline warning maybe. We saw Canisius earlier in this game get a stop defensively against this Red Raiders offense. Now it's St. Francis that almost needs to return the favor if they want to have a chance at really coming back in this ball game. You know, you score this one here, you keep everything up in front of you. 
And Elijah Kimball yep. once again. That is his fifth touchdown run of the afternoon to put Canisius in front 41 to 21. That touchdown brought to you by Firth Jewelers. Go forth to Firth. Now last October when we were here, I believe it was October 23rd, this was almost the exact same score at the end of the game. Kimball again runs with his eyes. All great running backs run with their eyes and it's instantaneous uh, movement with his feet. Cuts, gets to the outside, bounces it vertical. Just a sign of a great overall running back and great physical skill sets. And the extra point is up and good as the Crusaders take a 42-21 lead with 14 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And the Crusader student section was just chanting, it's too easy. Well, you know, so is an 80-yard touchdown. So we're still going into the fourth quarter. I do not think that St. Francis is out of this football game, um, but they just cannot make any more big mistakes. You know, can't make any more big mistakes. But what a great football game, huh? And there is an injury right on the field for Canisius. Their nose guard, Javez Caldwell, down on the field following the extra point, and he's now walking off on his own power. Appears to be okay. But like you said, when you have the offenses that this contest features, you can never rule St. Francis out of a game. The more difficult part for the Red Raiders, though, is do they have the ability to get the stops on defense to give their offense enough opportunities to get back? Well, you have to leverage the win at some point. And with a quarterback like you have, I truly believe that if you get the ball, you know, you spread the ball out now, you know, let him run the football. Let him throw the football. You know, you got to put it in the hands of your quarterback. Your wide receivers have consistently gotten behind the secondary of Canisius. And I think the only way you come back is if you can, you got to leverage the win. And that drive summary was three plays, 19 yards, capped off by a seven yard touchdown run by Elijah Kimball, who you just saw was trying to pump up his fellow students in, at Canisius High School. As they're getting into it with Zombie Nation playing in the crowd. And the Costanzos kickoff is going to go out of bounds. The Costanzos kickoff brought to you by Costanzos Bakery. And St. Francis will get the ball with 14 seconds remaining in this third quarter. There's a great look of this young man. I mean, he's he's... He's built like he's a 20-year-old already. Um, and this young man just has such a great future in front of him. He's been so much fun to watch. Five-yard line. So St. Francis gets the ball on their own 35-yard line in a possession where they desperately need to score some points to get back into this contest. You know, we just were talking about the turnovers and the, and the, you know, 19 yards. That second turnover could be the game. It was a two, two score. And right with some pressure, but Welka gets it off. And that's gonna be a first down for St. Francis as Welka finds Tucker Job. And that'll be an Interstate Battery's first down. Interstate battery is outrageously dependable. You're going to see the tempo pick up a little bit here in the fourth quarter because that's what I think that's what Jerry has to do here because this this defense has got to be tested. They've been you know you've got to test their gas. You got to score the big play, and and that's been the key to their success so far. If they could just stop shooting themselves in the foot long enough, this, they've got a chance to get back in this game. Likely the final play of the third quarter. Welka looking to his left. He has Job, and that'll go for close to a first down and out of bounds to wrap up this third quarter. Canisius leading St. Francis 42 to 21 as we have an exciting final 12 minutes in front of you. We'll be right back, brought to you by William Matar and the Vinyl Outlet.
Welcome back to Kessler Field, where Canisius is leading St. Francis 42 to 21 to open up the fourth quarter. Quarter, the Red Raiders with the ball, trying to trim into this lead, and it's Walka going deep and incomplete as he was trying to find Damone Allen, but well covered by the Crusaders secondary. Well, and now you're looking at they've got to throw the football, but now they're the. I'm not going to say that the wind is a huge issue, but it's enough where that last ball kind of flew and floated in the air a little bit, given for the first time, Canisius the ability to run underneath it. So that'll set up a third and two for St. Francis and everything going forward for them is four down territory. Yeah, right now, you, you know, I think your quarter, you're going to see your quarterback run the football here. I don't think you can really trust the ball with anybody else. He's the hot hand. Sam Skalski in motion. Welka what with an throw. impressive throw to Edward Gothier for the first down. That first down brought to you by Express Windows, now installing windows as low as 329 within five to six weeks. Just a great poise. Sits in the pocket, finds him, puts it right where he can catch it. That was what they call an indefensible pass. Great job. And with the way Welk has been lighting it up today, he might have a shot at cl close to 400 yards uh, by the end of this game. Welk complete again for another first down. And that was Gothier once again for the Express Windows first down. Now installing windows as low as $329 within five to six weeks. See, if you can get the short field, right? The short field is going to make a difference every single time because now you can do pretty much whatever you want to. They're able to run the ball a little bit, throw the quick hitters like they did in the very beginning of the game. And that throw got them inside the Just Pizza delivery zone. Well, okay. With the snap, this one, keeping it himself, rolling to the right. I believe he has his man, William Hansen, who gets blown up on the tackle. There's a man down on the field. Looks like that was William Hansen who had caught the ball on that play. We said this was going to be a very physical game. It was a clean tackle, lowered his shoulder, probably just got underneath the ribs there. Hopefully the young man just has the wind knocked out of him, but that was a great hit. That was Jaden Clark with the hit, and Jaden Clark, as we said, one of the better players in Western New York, both offensively and defensively. And it looks like... It's been a very physical contest, hasn't it? You know, very physical doing game. It looks like Hanson has gotten up and walking off the sideline. You can see his stats coming into uh, so far. Four catches for 56 yards. Testament to, to, to uh, Welka is that he's spread the ball around a little bit too. You know, he's hitting, you know, tight end here. He hits the back out. He hits the wide receivers downfield. He, he throws the ball all over the field. He's got, the, he's got every throw. On second down, Welka going to there once again. and. This is a touchdown for St. Francis, and there is a flag at the end of the play, but Welka finding the end zone on the pass. I believe that was Gothier who had made the play, waiting on the call from the officials. Another man downfield. Dead ball, personal foul, defense. And that penalty is on. Kanisha, so the touchdown will stand. That's a Firth Jewelers touchdown. Go Firth to Firth. And we just, we keep seeing St. Francis get it done in the air. And now it's going to be a two score game once again. Yeah. And, you know, one of these, you saw the last onside kick that they tried or the pooch kick. It went out of bounds. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, Jerry's not going to change. Uh, so Jerry's going to try to get this ball back. And that extra point barely gets over the goalpost, but does cross it to go in for the extra point to make it a 42 to 28 game. So still some life 
for St. Francis as we head to a break. Brought to you by the law offices of William Attar in the Vinyl Outlet. And we are back at Kessler Field. And just a reminder of the tonight's trophy des designation by Niagara Awards following the game. Sitting there hiding in the box. That's always something to stay tuned for following the conclusion of every game. And St. Francis kicks this one off deep. And some room for Amir Hernandez. And he's wow. going to break this one and go the distance for the kickoff return touchdown. What a play by Amir Hernandez as he takes the Costanzo's kickoff all the way the distance for a Firth Jewelers touchdown. Here I said that Jerry, uh, Coach Smith, wasn't going to change. First time we've seen a deep kick all day long. And you just wonder if they're not used to that type of coverage. And clearly, uh, what a great job blocking. But more than that, we saw we watched this young man as a running back also run with his eyes. But then to take that to the house, 92 yards, I believe it was, or 82 yards, incredible return. Every time St. Francis puts points on the board, Kanisha seems to have an answer. And that's just been the way this game has gone so far today. Well, they're in a rhythm right now. They, they're starting to believe in themselves. You're seeing the young quarterback come of age here. Uh, you know, a lot of things are happening for Canisius right now. And the extra point is no good. So the score will remain 48 to 28 with 10-18 left in this fourth quarter. And we're going to take a look at the replay. Scott, deep kick. Now you're seeing everybody man up at the first level. And then the, the little over pursuit and that quickness, that cut, a hey, nice job in the pursuit from behind. But once he gets in front of you, there's no catching that young man. All you're going to do is get his fumes from the gas tank. It's not often that we have a Costanzo's, a Costanzo's kickoff and a Firth Jewelers touchdown on the same play, Scott. Well, that's a Firth. <laughs> but uh, a tremendous play by Hernandez and now St. Francis is in a situation where after scoring they, they still have to continue putting it up in the air and we were talking about Landon Welka so far in the day he has 425 total yards you know in, yeah you know St. Francis uh, shot themselves in the foot a couple times uh, too many tonight now the clock is their greatest enemy you know they've got tremendous players the quarterback's been awesome great wide receivers but now just too many mistakes for too long at this game and Canisius has responded like you said with a great uh, great a great play every single time that you know St. Francis has done something to get back on the board and here we see another Costanzo's kickoff brought to you by Costanzo's Bakery. And what I was going to say prior to the kickoff is this really has been a game of one team, Canisius, which is making St. Francis pay for their mistakes. And then another team in the Red Raiders that they're paying the price of their own mistakes. Yeah, you're just running out of time. And, you know, when we talk about a chess match, right, you, you, this is when you can't make the mistakes. You, you know, when it becomes one team's playing chess and the other one's playing checkers because of the mistakes that they've made, that's the difference. These teams are very, very equal in talent, very equal in coaching staffs. Um, but I'm going to tell you what, today it was just who made the most mistakes, two key turnovers, and that is really the difference in our football game today, and you as it is in most football games. And one of our keys was win the turnover battle. Uh, we heard from uh, one of the producers that reminded us. Absolutely, and so far today we're seeing Canisius really take advantage of that. As St. Francis gets the first down completion on their first play of the offensive possession. 
Craig's done pretty, Coach Krasanski has done pretty much everything that he set out to do today. Uh, special teams has been his deal, control the line of scrimmage. He's given up some big plays, but other than that, the game plan has been sound. Welka going to the air on first down, and that'll be complete towards the sidelines for a gain of a few. Damone Allen with the reception. And there appears to be a Canisius player down on the field. Looks to be Patrick Enright for the Crusaders. He's been a solid player all day today. Hopefully it's not much more than, you know, it looks like he's holding his chest. Hopefully it's just a little wind knocked out of him. And Enright has been a, a tremendous player for them all season. Uh, last week at St. Joe's was terrorizing uh, the Marauders uh, offense the entire afternoon. An impact player on Canisius. And just a reminder that today's closed captioning is exclusively brought to you by Bob Chas Pierogi. As you see the Canisius student section clapping as Enright Walks off the field with it on his own power. Been a very physical football game in the trenches, and I think when you go back and when these guys look at the film, I think they're going to be very happy with both sides of the ball, especially on the Canisius side. Both teams back out on the field. St. Francis seeing that clock tick under Nine and a half minutes. Welka with a quick pass, and that'll be another Express Windows first down. Now installing windows as low as 329 within five to six weeks. And from this point forward, St. Francis just has to play quick offensively. No real room to be patient. You need to try to score 20 points in under nine minutes of clock. Well, and Canisius is going to be very happy to play a little, a little deeper. In their, in their cover two, uh, give you the under route, give you that five to six to seven yard. They're gonna give up first downs as long as you're not giving up those big plays. Come up, get, you know, they're, they're gonna take what you give them because you're not giving up the big play down. You can't give up any more big plays. You can't let anybody behind you anymore. And that was a pass to Nico Pinelli on first down, a gain of about three and a half great yards. Great catch, great tackle. But that's exactly what Canisius wants to do at this point. Anything to keep that clock ticking. And St. Francis, on the other hand, they need to find ways to get more yardage. Welka pressured. He's going to take it himself. He has some room, and he's showing off those legs. Wow. Still on his feet inside the Just Pizza delivery zone down to the 16-yard line. Whatever you do, never stop competing. Whatever they give you, you take. This young man is going to be a major college football player at some level. I don't know if he's a Division II FCS or BCS, but he's got, he's got wheels, he's got eyes, and he's got an arm. And Canisius calls a timeout following the Welco run, trying to get some air in their players after the nice play by the St. Francis quarterback. Yeah, this is their last one, and uh, if you're going to use it, this is a good time to, because if you can keep them out of the end zone right now, let them use up a, another minute or two before they get in. If you keep them out of the end zone for the next minute or two, then you can put together a long drive yourself, and just right now it's about eating the rest of the time off that clock. And we want to give another mention to uh, the Louis Texas Hots and especially their omelets. The crew loved the food prior to the game today and always a good time whenever you go I've there. I've never had a breakfast burrito that had Texas Red Hot hot dogs. Guess what? I'm gonna, with the chili sauce? You gotta Are try Are you kidding it. me? You know, I they have a, a, a hot dog omelet that is unbelievable. Their hot dog omelet is amazing. Get chocolate milkshake, you're gonna feel really full afterwards, but you're going to enjoy while you eat. <laughs> well, I, you know, I've had, I've had, you know, the beef on weck, I've had chicken wings, I've had everything buffalo, but I've never, today was my first day with a chili hot dog omelet. It was awesome. Welka, he has a man open at the end zone, and this one is going to be incomplete. Amir Hernandez, I believe, broke it up with a big hit. 
in the back of the end zone. And now there is a player down on Canisius. That's Jason Love as he gets went up, up for the ball, a little bit. Came down, came down, went up for the ball like he's supposed to at the highest point. Might have gotten stepped on. And that was Edward Gauthier who was in the back of the end zone trying to make the jump ball reception. It looked like he had a little bit of a step earlier in the play, but it Welka took maybe a second too long to find him in making a jump ball situation. And right now, Welka up to 398 pass yards, 40, 96 on the ground for 494 total yards. And he's going to add to that with the touchdown pass to Tucker Job, putting him over 500 total yards of offense in this contest. His fourth touchdown pass, fifth total touchdown to bring St. Francis within two possessions. And, and the amazing thing is, is that he he has thrown today what he has probably thrown the full season coming up here. I mean, this is just an amazing football game. Welka on the year entering today, 25 of 45 for 403 and five touchdowns. Today alone as the extra point, this one is no good, so that'll keep it a 14-point game. But five touchdowns alone today. And 400 yards. He's literally matched. every. It's incredible. An incredible and, performance on, on both sides of the ball. And following his fifth total touchdown, we're going to head to a quick break. Canisius leading 48-34. to 34. This time out brought to you by William Matar in the Vinyl Outlet. Welcome back to Kessler Field, where we just saw Landon Welka get his fifth touchdown of the game, his fourth touchdown pass, and that was a Firth Jewelers touchdown on his last pass. Go forth to Firth. And St. Francis kicking this one off. 8.01 remaining. It's a two score game. Every possession will matter for the Red Raiders going forward. And this is a little bit of an onside attempt, and Canisius quickly falls on the Costanzo's kickoff, brought to you by Costanzo's Bakery. And Scott, all day long we were wondering, why don't you kick it off deep? Why don't you try to change it up a little bit? Well, prior to that kickoff, we saw why they, they choose to kick it short. Yeah, now, you know, you got to make you know, Canisius. Canisius is got the best running back, one of the top running backs in the state. And I truly believe that up front, Canisius is very confident. And right now, you got to hand the ball because I think St. Francis only has one timeout left as well. Anything to keep that clock running. So the Crusaders have it on their own 42-yard line. 7.59 remaining in the fourth quarter. And it's a run to Jason Love on an end around. And he picks a nice gain of... Nine yards on first down. And if you're the Crusaders, you just want to keep this clock ticking. Sit in that huddle, line up, and then let your coach tell you when to, sna when to start the, the, the snap. We've seen the Canisius offensive line kind of have their way running the ball so far this afternoon. But if there was ever a time for St. Francis to get a stop or need a stop, this is where they need to find a way to somehow Make something happen. Here comes that power to the short side of the field. Yep, there it is. There and it is. This one is there Kimball. it is. I'm telling you, it's the same play every single time, and it's holding. Oh, that would have been Elijah Kimball's sixth touchdown of the afternoon, but coming back on a holding penalty and. That's a break for St. Francis, but sure Canisius is. fans got excited about another one on the ground. This has been a special day, even with that coming back. This has been a special day for both of our key players of the game. We were talking about Landon Welka, and we were talking about Elijah Kimball. Well, they both have put on 
and an unbelievable show this afternoon. The, the only the only thing that you know you can do against something like that is to start holding offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. Until they can stop it, and I have not seen the slant to the boundary. I haven't seen a slant to the boundary and an edge pressure, which sometimes typically could stop that. Uh, it's been straight up O line play, and uh, you know. <laughs> If you didn't get that holding call, what an amazing, just a, I thought there's just a great block right there. Yep. Three pulled down, but it was a back block, but you know what? It's a well, well executed play, no matter how you might, now you might have it coming back to the left. And that sets up a second and 11, but not for long as. Dead ball, encroachment, defense, five yard penalty, second down. St. Francis jumps off sides and That'll set up a second and six. So right when they get them behind the chains a little bit, then they help them out, which is probably the last thing that Coach Smith wanted to see in this situation. Well, that's coaching. That's Coach Krasanski saying hard count it. Change the count. The count's been the same the, almost the entire game. He told his quarterback to hard count that. That's the first offside or encroachment that we've seen. Brusco in shotgun. And this is a running play for Canisius. That looked to be Amir Hernandez, who takes it down to the 49-yard line. It'll be third and one for the Canisius Crusaders. This is confusing. The ref ruled a first down, but the ball is clearly a short yard short of what is needed. And now they're correcting him and calling it a third down. Canisius looking to just keep the time coming off the clock. As Arno it ticks under six minutes. Arno and Bio just checks into the game as a fullback. Handoff on third down, and Look Amir Hernandez is going to make a house call for a touchdown. There is a flag near midfield. I'm not sure if this is going to stand or come back, waiting on the official call. Hernandez took that in from 49 yards out. And this is going to be on Canisius. And that's the second touchdown taken back from Canisius on this drive alone. Well, you know, this was the tale of the of the you know of the yellow flags the entire day. You know, St. Francis uh, in the first half. And now Canisius in the second. If but it, the good thing for Canisius is this is eating up shift. clock. Offense. You know what Five I mean? It's penalty. eating up it's clock. It feels like the only thing that can stop either offense in this game is themselves. Themselves, absolutely. So it'll be third and six after the penalty call. If you want an indicator of how dominant Canisius has been in the second half with their offensive line. They're literally lining up and telling you where they're going. They're lining up with a fullback. We're running power right here. We're running ISO right here. Clark in motion. Amir Hernandez gets the carry and he easily picks up the first down. An express windows first down. Now installing windows as low as 329 within five to six weeks. And as you said, it's just been one of those days where whatever Canisius wants to get done running the ball, there's nothing that can stop him. And, and I wouldn't say that that, hap that that existed in the first half. I, I, I mean, I, in my opinion, in the first half, I thought uh, St. Francis, had they not had the penalties that they did, I thought this could have been a runaway uh, game at some point. But I'll tell you, Canisius has just been steady and adjustments and just have taken, dominated the second half of this football game. 
Hernandez. Look at gets this. Look at this. He's going to break this one. He's going to be tackled right before the end zone as Hernandez gets all the way inside the Just Pizza delivery zone. And that's another Express Windows first down. Now installing windows as low as 329 within five to six weeks. That was almost our third house call. Yeah, of the just day. A, another another power pulled the backside guard, kicks it out, and these guys run what they call center cylinder. These kids are getting vertical faster than the linebackers can scrape to fill the hole. As I was just saying, that was almost the third house call of this drive alone. Two of them already coming back on penalties, but Amir Hernandez wanted to make it a third attempt. I don't know he, how he still has the energy well, after running for we, 50 yards at a time. We saw a game like this two weeks ago um, against South Park in Iroquois where they have a young man named Nunez that ran for 580-something yards, and it's very similar. 593 he ran for, a new state record, and now look at what we're getting to do again here today. We're getting to broadcast easily two of the best offensive performers in New York State, right? 100%. 100%. Best quarterback in the state and best running back in the state right here, at least from what I've seen. Welka is definitely one of the better quarterbacks I've seen this year. And Elijah Kimball, there's, there's no debate where he's going to end up being with how much he's contributed so far in his few years at Canisius. Brusco under center. Amir Hernandez met in the backfield, and St. Francis, you could hear that collision from up here in the press box. That might have been the uh, hot dog burrito, actually. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't get that on my mind. That was so scrumptious. And the clock continues to wind down under four minutes. And St. Francis really can do nothing but try to get a stop or a takeaway. That's what they desperately need. Well, these two bring the best out of each other. Every time they play, it's a heavyweight fight. Brusco looking to pass. This is a completion. Down inside the five, close to the goal line, this will be just short. Now what's so great about that is the precision of that pass. When you go back and take a look, if we get in, uh, take a look at the uh, replay on that, this just goes to show you how this young man has grown in confidence throughout this game. He was a little hesitant in the very first quarter, but he's grown into a, a really good high school quarterback. Take a look, he sets his feet, throws it in, I mean, that's a, that's a great little throw. Puts it down only where the wide receiver can grab it. And it looks like this ball is on the ground. And it's going to be St. Francis ball. So they still have a little bit of hope with 236 remaining, but a long ways to go on offense. Well, if, if you're going to do it, this is, this is how this stuff is set up. Two minutes, 36 seconds left. You've got a quarterback that has absolutely had one of his best days, or probably the best day of his career. You know, you get a good push here, and then as I'm telling you about the young man, the quarterback, he makes a young man mistake. That appeared to be a bot center quarterback exchange on the snap, and that was really the only thing that could keep St. Francis still in this game. A field goal or a touchdown would have effectively ended it at that moment in time, but still a tough situation for the Red Raiders needing to go 99 yards. Uh, we've seen them do this a couple times now. Wolka up to 510 yards this afternoon, and he gets a first down completion to Damone Allen close to the 10 yard line. And St. Francis is gonna need to go back to their favorite thing, which is making explosive plays in order to try to have a chance at possibly making this a one score game. Well, this is where you give them four or five first downs, okay? You don't let anything get behind you here. Sit back. Welka going See, that's deep. exactly the way you play this. Sorry to have interrupted you. That's the, exactly the way you're supposed to play this now. Play it deep, keep everything in front of you. 
and he was trying to find Matthew Zielinski, his intended receiver on the play. And as you hit it, it's a situation where Kadishas, the clock is their friend. Just don't give up anything big. You don't necessarily have to play prevent defense, but you're gonna you gotta drop your guys back to 14, 15 yards in a back pedal, line them up at 12, and then just back out and make sure nothing gets behind you. St. Francis talking things over before breaking the huddle. It'll be third and about one for the Red Raiders. And it's a run play. I don't think he did he get it. It'll be close to the yard to gain, but it looks like he's gonna be ruled short, waiting for an official signal. This is essentially the football game right here. And there is a Canisius player down on the field with 136 Chavez remaining. Caldwell. This is the second time he's been on the, he's taken a little bit of a knee. He's played a heck of a game today. Very. And we're gonna take a look at our vinyl outlet defense play of the game. It was a turnover that we saw earlier in the second half. The defense play of the game is brought to you by the Vinyl Outlet. The Vinyl Outlet, let us transform your home. And you can see here, disrupting the reverse and creating a takeaway. That was Javez Caldwell, the man who was just down on the field who actually had the recovery on that play and really kind of broke the doors open for Canisius as they were able to capitalize shortly after to really put this game out of reach. Yeah, that 19 play, one minute drive that they had or 103 drive that they had that resulted in a touchdown, that was more, most likely the backbreaker of the, uh, of the second half. And we just got an update with the stats. Landon Welka up to 423 pass yards, 96 yards rushing, 519 total yards in this ball game. And he figures to try to add some here on fourth and one. And it's a hand up. Nope, Welka keeping it himself. He has a first down and quite a bit more as he's going to scamper out of bounds. Flags late. Down the field, well past the first down marker, but still in a position of where it's probably going to come back. I, I would bet that you would find a very hard in all the games that we cover across the country to have a quarterback have 519 total yards where it was not an, a slaughter. Yeah, it's it's a weird situation to be it talking really about is. a 500 plus yard performance where your team is yeah, down two it's, touchdowns. It's a very unique situation. I've never seen that before. I've now, never sometimes, seen such an outstanding. Sometimes you have the situations where you're down so much that you do nothing but pass the rest of the way, but that wasn't really this game. No. St. Francis was competitive in the first Ball, half. Blindside block off the distance to the goal. Does he want to? Waiting to see where this ball will be placed as the penalty was on St. Francis for a blindside block. But as we were saying, it, it, this is a rare situation where Welka has been great throughout this game. Just unfortunately, St. Francis defensively couldn't really get the stops they needed to make his performance end up in a victory. Well, you know, and, and on top of that too, it, I, you know, I think that they had enough horsepower to match offense. But I just think too many mistakes. You know, the guy comes back, I, I get what he's trying to do, but you've got to have the helmet in front and these cut and these comeback blocks. These are the ones that end careers early. Thank God nobody got hurt in that situation. And that was Edward Gothier who made the infraction on the play. But hats off to Craig Krasansky and his staff. I mean, this is, as well prepared as I've ever seen Canisius, and I've watched Canisius many times over the years, but Coach Krasansky's taken a real step at the dominance of Canisius back in the Western New York area again. Now the first down marker is up, so it does appear that St. Francis got a first down, but they're still backed up after a sack by the Canisius defense, and the student section here can can feel the victory 
as we enter the final minute of play in the fourth quarter. The ball inside the five yard line for the Red Raiders. Welka still going to there and this one incomplete to Hardy, setting up a third and long. Thirty-one seconds left in this game. And Canisius is going to pick up a huge win in this series as the Crusaders lost both games to St. Francis last year and now able to get a huge win to get a victory here at home at Kessler Field. Welka, he's gonna be intercepted and we're gonna see one more score for Canisius. An interception return touchdown by the Crusaders. That was Darnell Gallimore with the interception return touchdown to put Canisius in front 54 to 34 with 22 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter and that touchdown is a Firth Jewelers touchdown. Go forth to Firth. And that's just the way today has gone for St. Francis. Canisius has been able to capitalize off of their mistakes and the final score is going to end up showing exactly that as the extra point is up and good, putting the Crusaders in front by 21 points with 22 seconds left to go. And we want to give one more quick shout out to Tim Hortons who was very helpful prior to this game. We had some uh, coffee before the game and they were definitely helpful to our entire production crew as they were setting up here at Kessler Field early on this morning. So big thank you to Tim Hortons. And there's a look at Elijah Kimball on the sidelines and he had and he had quite the day today. Elijah Kimball definitely probably had some Tim Hortons before the game as he was energized. He had a five touchdown performance, over 200 yards on the ground. Only a sophomore, but making his presence known throughout Western New York. And the Crusaders players having some fun on the sidelines as they now are feeling it. 22 seconds away from a victory over one of their big conference rivals. And the Costanzo's kickoff is off. And St. Francis is going to take this out of bounds. The Costanzo's kickoff brought to you by Costanzo's Bakery. And the Red Raiders will take the field with 18 seconds left. With the win, Canisius will improve to three and two overall on the season. While St. Francis will fall to two and three overall with a forfeit included in their record. Welka was limping a little bit going back onto the field, but stuff that you'd expect in a hard fought battle as Hardy gets the carry and that'll likely do it here at Kessler Field as the clock continues to tick the final seconds away. And Canisius gets in the win column for the second straight week over a conference rival this time. 55 
to 34 over the St. Francis Red Raiders. And we will take a quick break brought to you by the William Attar Law Offices and the Vinyl Outlet. Welcome back to Kessler Field where the Canisius Crusaders pick up a huge 55 to 34 victory over their conference rival St. Francis Red Raiders to improve to three and two overall. We're gonna send it down to the field to Scott Pilecki who's with the victorious coach, head coach. Down here with Coach Krasanski, the successful Crusaders. Coach, congratulations on winning the William Thursday night game winning championship trophy. Coach, what are you gonna say about your team? How about those Crusaders, man? Yeah. Yeah, enjoy it. Back up to you guys. What a great win for the Canisius Crusaders today as they were able to really get it done on the ground with Elijah Kimball rushing for five touchdowns and then a special teams touchdown, a defensive touchdown, and they're going to have a lot to celebrate today as they improve to three and two overall. We want to thank all of our sponsors for this ball game. And our next game on the network will be Grand Island versus Williamsville South on Thursday, October 10th at 7 p.m. So that's definitely a game that you're gonna wanna tune in to see all of the action. But we appreciate everybody watching this broadcast and we'll be back next week. Brought to you by William Attar and the Vinyl Outlet. Defense Play of the Game is brought to you by... All of us would like to take a moment to thank the wonderful sponsor partners, the Law Offices of William Attar and the Vinyl Outlet, who through their contributions to this program make these games possible for you viewers at home. We would also like to thank our other great sponsor supporters for their contributions to our Thursday Night Lights telecast, Aesthetic Associates, the University of Buffalo, Interstate Battery, Express Windows, Bob Chaparogi, Costanzo's Bakery, Willoughby Insurance, Firth Jewelers, Team Market Plumbing, Just Pizza, and CSL Plasma. And we would especially like to thank tonight's participating high schools and their administrators for their continued support. 